And we are live in YouTube. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning, good morning. All right. And we will about to start in a few. I request everyone to please come in and have your colleagues and other all the presenters to be in the conference. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Let me see. May I request to open your cameras? Let me see that smile. And by the way, later I will be um getting a group photo so i will be requesting everyone to uh, open their cameras but that will be later on all right so again good morning all good morning good morning i welcome you all to this first day of international conference in innovation on innovation challenges and advances in engineering and technology a road to self-reliant india or icaet 2021 and this uh, is organized by the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Vishwanikitan's Institute of Management Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology, or the VMIT, in, in, in association with yours truly, the Institute for Engineering Research and Publication, also known as the IFERP. Just a little bit about IFERP, Institute for Engineering Research and Publication, is one of the world's largest non-profitable professional associations meant for research development and promotion in the field of engineering and technology. We are a platform to promote the advancement and dissemination of the knowledge of engineering and technology. IFERP is a professional association and a forum where innovations and research interests could be supported and developed prioritizing our mutual interests. Our forums and associates constitute professional leaders and organizations connecting each other with the mission to work as wizards of science for defending the earth. IFERP provides a world-class platform for scientists researchers, academicians, business figures by organizing conferences and publishing research articles. IFERP conferences bring together the professional wizards and leaders who have explored all avenues for reinforce the field of applied science, engineering, and technology. So here's a little bit about, uh, there's a, a short video about the Vishwanikitans Institute. Well, let me go ahead and share my screen one moment here. Oops, hold on. Do you want to experience the best innovative approach in learning? Vishwaniketan is the first private engineering institute in India to implement project-based learning, that is PBL, a methodology that effectively bridges the gap between theoretical and practical education. Students with less practical knowledge often find it difficult to cope with the new industry challenges. To address these issues, Vishwaniketan introduced summer training programs for seven weeks in Europe and U.S. universities, followed by masters for students. With robust PBL, students now have the opportunity to learn architecture, engineering, design, business modeling, and incubation together under one roof. Vishwaniketan's impetus on practical knowledge led to the creation of the best industry labs through collaborations with the best foreign universities including a state-of-the-art business lab by Aarhus University, Denmark. The efforts have paid off with 86% placements and 100% industry internships achieved. Young founders were born with 14 student-founded startups formed due to the help of Vishwaniketan's incubation center. With safe hostel and transport facilities at Khalapur, near Navi Mumbai, boost your future by visiting www.theridby.com slash Vishwaniketan campus or call on 
All right. Furthermore, Vishwani Kitan is poised to become one of the leading institutions in India. In My apologies. Again, Vishwani Kitan, in addition, is poised to become one of the leading institutions in India. In our quest to achieve new milestones in undergraduate engineering education, we have come together as a group of extraordinary educationists, corporates, and industrialists, and entrepreneurs. We not only part theoretical knowledge, but also introduce our students to real world problems that they face when they join the industry. Vishwanikitan's Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology, or the VME, is approved by All India Council for Technical Education, New Delhi, HR, HRD Ministry, and Government of India. It is affiliated to Mumbai University. The search for uh, the search results are CTIF Global Capsule. Vishwanitika Network is responsible for our collaboration abroad and in India. VMeet is already working with academic partners such as Oracle Workforce Development Program or the WDP, IBM, and Zensar. The, the Vishwanitika Vishwaniketan CGC Network has created opportunities of summer internships, master, and PhD programs for Indian students and teachers in universities abroad. In last seven years, the network created 25 and more tie-ups with universities abroad. More than 900 students have successfully completed PBL summer internships. And more than 70 teachers completed the PhD. So the, here are a few of the following uh, collaborations of VMeet. VMeet, University of Arkansas, Little Rock, USA. Stevens Institute of Technology, USA. University of Nevada, USA. University of Louisville, USA. ITU San Jose, California, US. Arsus University, Denmark. Alborg University, Denmark. Tor Vergata University, Rome, Italy. Athens Institute of Technology, Greece. Ural Federal University, Russia. Poznan University of Technology, Poland. Mei Fa Luang University, Thailand. National Technology University of Ukraine. Kyiv Polytechnic University, Ukraine. Technical University of Sofia, Bulgaria. Teesside University, UK. University of Leicester, UK. Birmingham University, UK. And Avignon University, France. And not but not the least, Hellenic American College, Athens. Athens, Greece. Those are a few of the collaborations of VMeet across the globe. And about this conference, the objective of this ICAET 2021 is to present the latest research and results of scientists, preferred students, postgraduate students, research scholars, and postdoctorate scientists related to electrical and electronics and communications engineering and computer science and engineering. The conference will feature traditional paper presentations as well as keynote speeches by prominent speakers who will focus on rel related state-of-the-art technologies in the areas of the conference. The aim of this conference is to assemble scholars from all over the, the world to present advances in the appropriate fields and so foster an, an environment conducive to exchanging ideas and information. Also, this conference will also present an ideal environment to extend new collaborations and gather experts on the fundamentals, applications, and products of the mentioned domain of computer science information technology, electrical, electronics, and communications engineering with valuable discussions in order to make the outcome more realistic.
So a, a little bit of benefits to delegates attending this conference is, of course, learning new ideas and approaches and conferences make delegates more effective and efficient at work. Conferences offer the opportunity to delegates to meet business leaders and to position as an expertise or her field. Good conferences offer opportunities for delegates to mix and mingle, form new relationships, and strengthen existing ones. A well-run conferences will help faculty curate new ideas. Even though it's a lot of information on the web, conferences will cut through the clutter to deliver the best content specific. Conferences force the delega delegates to break out of their comfort zone. Break out of breaking out of comfort zone is just the type of action that is necessary to break out of old ways of thinking. The flip side of learning new things is relearning classic techniques. Conferences create opportunities for greater focus and reflection that could help delegates to take ideas to the next level. Conferences provide a unique a convergence of networking, learning, and fun into a single package. And now I would like to welcome all our honorable dignitaries. First, I would like to welcome my beloved principal, Dr. B. R. Patil, Vishwanikatan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship, and Engineering Technology. Next, I would like also to welcome Rudra Banu Satpati, our very own Chief Executive Officer of the Technorit Group. Next, I would like to welcome Dr. S. S. Inamdar, Vice President, Vishwanikatan Institutions. Dr. Vikas Shinde, Director, PBLCOE, Vishwanikitan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology. Next, I would like to welcome our beloved conveners of our um, conference, Professor Kishore Main, Assistant Professor Vishwanikitan Institute of Managing, Management, Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology. Next, Prof Professor Chinmay Rohikar, Assistant Professor Vishwanikitan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship, and Engineering Technology. Next, Professor Sagar Dutari, Assistant Professor, Vishwanikitan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship, and Engineering Technology. Also, I would like to welcome our eminent keynote speakers for this conference. HEU Nesco Lorate, Professor Sir, Sir Bashiro Arimo, the Vice Chancellor, Crown University International Chartered Inc., USA, Santa Cruz in Argentina, partners, constituent campuses worldwide. Dr. Santosh Rane Orain, Dean Academics, Sardar Patel College of Engineering, Mumbai. Next, I would like to welcome our honorable session chairs of our conferences. Our Dr. Rahul Vishwanath Dandage, or Dandage, Head of Department of Automobile Engineering, Rahen, Rajendra, Main College of Engineering and Technology, Ratnagiri. So also, Sidapa Bushnur, Professor KJ Somaya, College of Engineering, Mumbai. Next, Professor Abhijit Patil, Head of the Department of Computer and Science Engineering, Vishwa Nikitan, Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology. C, Professor C. Subarami Reddy, Professor and Associate Head of Department in Electrical and Electronics Engineering at BV Raju Institute of Technology, Narsapur, Medak, Telangana. Also, Dr. Vikas Shinde, Director, PBLCOE, Vishwanikitan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship, and Engineering Technology. Thank you all for joining us even during this pandemic situation and imparting your expertise. And I would like also to welcome all our presenters from all over the world who have shared their valuable time idea valuable ideas, time, and innovations in this forum. And now let us welcome to deliver the to deliver the welcoming speech 
He is the vice president of Vishwanikitan Institutions. He is a bachelor's in engineering, uh, in electrical engineering, obtained master's degree in electrical control systems. He completed a doctoral program from National Institute of Engineering in electrical distribution system efficiency improvement. He has total 32 years of experience in education, out of which 20 plus years has been leading different academic campuses in the capacity of director, principal, and has worked with more than 40,000 students. He has he was a Senate member of University of Pune, member of board of management, board of research of Guru Gobind Singh, Indra Pashtra University, New Delhi. He was expert member of Department of Science and Technology Committee of Government India for the scheme of Rajat Jayanti Vigyan Sancharak Fellowship. He has participated in three European Union projects under Erasmus Mundus programs, which provided 42 fellowships to Indian scholars at the level of master's, PhD, and post-PhD. He is a trustee of the first Indian standardization body of India titled Global ICT Standardization Forum for India or also known as the GISFI. He has worked as director CTIF India for the last 10 years. More than 70 teachers in India have completed their PhD studies abroad under, under the CGC Vishwanikitan Network, which also has created 900 plus fellowship for undergraduate students for PBL training in universities in Europe, USA, and Russia. He has worked on a number of industry collaborations successfully, like IBM, Center of Excellence, Reliance Manpower Development Program, Sensor Campus Connect. He has traveled e extensively in more than 28 countries and delivered talks in universities abroad. He has deeply, deeply studied education systems of development countries and is strongly convinced that Indian education has to be transformed from theoretical to problem and project-based learning, or also known as the PBL. He has given counseling to more than 60,000 students for career guidance all across India. His counseling gives the student insight on long-term career planning, focus, and willingness to work. Also, ethics and technical life skill development. He is currently a trustee and vice president of Vishwan Nikitans, um, an institute created by him and his friends from industry and academia for giving world-class learning experience to Indian students. Sir, we would like to request to deliver the welcome address. Let us welcome Dr. S. S. Inamdar. Good morning, all. Good Thank morning, you. sir. Thank you very much for a, a you know, big introduction. I think uh, you are leading the conference very well. Uh, Thank you. I, first of all, I welcome all the delegates, all the speakers, the keynote speakers. And this is an effort uh, which is being put in the difficult times of Corona. And that is why they are most uh, important and relevant. The theme of innovation and multidisciplinary learning, that to through project based learning and finally leading all the effort for product development technology development has been a focus of cti global capsule since long for india and other countries i think sufficient collaborations have been made as a preparatory work to actually take a kick start for the process I think you all must have understood the effort is getting technology, business modeling, and design together 
which completes the process of innovation and uh, product development. And the mechanical department of engineering uh, led by Professor Pasi has been doing amazing work. And uh, I, I only hope that the, and I'm sure the, the delegations, the papers and the keynote addresses will be very, very useful to all delegates finally to start working for the innovation. The, the, the area chosen has been diverse. Generally, the conferences are focused on one particular theme, but here the approach was to diversify the discussions so that many ideas can come and multidisciplinary work can be started. So with that all, as a host of this conference, I welcome you all and I invite you for further work, which can be conducted together. Um, you know, any individual, any institution can come forward, work with CTI Global Capsule to see to it that finally we achieve our objectives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Over to Thank the you. organizers. Thank you so much, Professor. And next, I would like to welcome our next eminent speaker to provide a uh, speech, the director, PBLCOE, Vishwan Nikitan, Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology. He is working as a professor in mechanical engineering department and director, Center of Excellence in Project-Based Learning or PBL at VMeet, Kalapur, Mumbai University. He is the first Indian PhD in PBL from Alborg University, Denmark, awarded by the UNESCO chair in PBL. He received a prestigious Erasmus Mundus Mobility for Life scholarship from European Union. He works as Erasmus Plus Project Coordinator and Steering Committee Member for Project Having International Consortium, which includes India, Denmark, Spain, Bulgaria, Thailand, and Pakistan. He has 19 plus years of teaching and administrative experience. He has published seven textbooks, one international e-thesis, published 43 journal papers and two patents. He has acted as a reviewer of international journals and conferences. He has trained more than 5,800 plus teachers through 160 plus national and international workshops on PBL and various teaching learning methods. His research areas include PBL model designs, human-centric design and hydrogen energy. He, was he has developed and implemented various capacity building programs for the Institute. He, he, has he has visited 17 countries, six international universities, and also he has been consulting three Indian institutes to building PBL curriculum and models. His vision is to spread scientific way of PBL practice and create regional center of excellence across India. Let us welcome, we'd like to request to share a few words about our conference, Dr. Vikash, Vikas Shinde. Hi, sir. Good morning. Welcome back. Hi, good morning. And thank you for introduction, actually. Uh, good morning, everyone, one and all. Uh, this is the immense pleasure to our short discussion on the theme of the conference. And thank you for the mechanical engineering department for giving me that chance. First of all, uh, on this very auspicious day, happy teacher's day to all my teachers, all my gurus sitting in India, outside India. I wish this is the conference which had been incepted right from this eight, nine months. And the organizing team has been working tirelessly to make it more successful. When I started thinking about organizing the international conference, 
we started thinking about the which date which should uh, make this conference to the public and we decided to have a 5th september because it's a happy teachers day and the best platform to give a tribute to dr sarupalli radhakrishnan on his birth anniversary so this is what the first uh, thought process we started then talking more about the theme of a conference a theme ends with the self reliant india which is very much aligned to the vision of vishwaniketan where we give away the rote learning process and the pbl text all form of learning uh, is given by in a pbl processes the first more importantly uh, i would say the dimensions for a self reliant india is the educating the students of engineering and many different streams to innovate and that's why the theme in includes innovation and challenges and when we have this education which is promoting innovation we required a incubation incubation for the businesses and the self reliant india theme emerged from this discussion where a pbl is been discussed as a one of the important learning process to develop students innovating challenges and challenging them their minds to innovate and develop good products but very often these products which are developed should not lie into the labs so it should come into the market and to that we require a businesses and business modeling approach is one of the important dimension of engineering education in vishwaniketan so the students develop products and projects through project based learning we uh, we have given many product design approaches to the students where they develop their projects into the products that products gets converted into the business modeling and that business models ultimately gets converted into the startups and that is the theme which is emerged from the vishwaniketan mindset of a self reliant india regarding the conference there are many Allah international Allah and Allah national Allah papers Allah. yeah thank you thank you for that so there are many international and national presenters who should are involved in this international conference i wish good luck to them regarding vishwaniketan we had as i as uh, mentioned by dr inamda also and uh, during uh, introduction to vishwaniketan it has been involved in a uh, many international programs currently it is offering 13 international programs all given by the our international universities it has been connected with a uh, 22 in international universities through which we practice different models of pbl we invite educational institutions in india to join this drive because project based learning is not an a simple task to execute and implement we require a good team and we require a representative models vishwaniketan so far has developed four project based learning approaches which has been successfully experimented in indian institutions every semester every year we handhold at least two institutes in india to make the change process smoother and i am very happy to inform you that all these institutes are immensely benefited because of the project based learning approach with this short note i once again welcome all the teachers presenters students and the international delegates to this conference and wish to have a good two days of knowledge exchange and interaction amongst the you thank you very much once again for inviting me and happy teachers day one and all thank you very much over to you jojo thank you so much thank you so much sir thank you for that speech And next, let us uh, welcome to uh, request our beloved CEO, Mr. Rudra Banusatpati, our very own um, CEO from IFERP, to address the conference. 
very good morning uh, jozo and the morning, entire sir. team of uh, international conference on innovation challenges and advances in uh, in advances in engineering and technology organized by vishwaniketan institution one of the finest institution of education and academic and management studies of india well on this auspicious day of teachers day i greet and express my hearty gratitude respect and love to all the technical and non technical teachers of india as well as the brilliant leaders who have switched from technical institutions and shared their experience and knowledge and skills in industries for the growth and development of country i dedicate few words for all the teachers today guru brahma guru vishnu guru deva maheshwara guru shakshat param brahma tashve shri gurave nama which means the teachers are the one who will enlighten and bring enlightening the education system of india and globe from primitive ages ifrp institute for engineering research and publication is a team of professional is a group of researchers a conglomeration of all leaders and academic institutions that operates by forming a bridge and interconnections a strong network between institutions colleges and technical universities all across the globe to form a leading source of knowledge and ultimately resulting in establishing one of the finest and largest professional society that would share knowledge at a rapid rate and thus will work towards the challenges being faced in development of research and advancement on this basis the conference title chosen by vishwaniketan institutions and ifrp at this forum was recent challenges in field of research well india and the current scenario of the universities in the country we believe the research is and trials at ground level is not reaching practically into industries and field application at a very rapid rate we are collaborating with industries and institution to establish a proper connection between them as well for the purpose we are establishing institutional chapters student chapters faculty chapters where maximum engagement and knowledge sharing of students and teachers and faculties would happen we are also rapidly forming the publication scenarios i mean establish bringing the high quality journals at this point of time when there is the uncertainty of covid 19 when the research institutions were left closed with restrictions of travel and physical meeting we encountered this challenge with infrastructure on scientific publications and online conferences at this point of time i feel proud once again to share that we have organized 113 international online events since the covid restrictions of physical meetings were imposed with successful organizing these scientific meetings we successfully connected with all leading developing nations and developing countries of globe and institutions all across to bring the students and faculties into one forum and we have successfully organized thousands of research articles and we have supported the students and faculties our team has worked a lot in developing the standards of the research to our joint supervisorship scheme i urge all the professionals faculties and researchers and professors of universities all across the globe to sign up to ifrp today into professional membership and getting the benefits of the privileged premium membership that will support in building and shaping the academic career 
and will make all of us a power source to deliver the knowledge and energy to students of all across the globe. I express my hearty gratitude to all the attendees, faculties, organizing committee members, renowned speakers of the conferences, Dr. Ande Murali Varaprasad, professors and directors, CIGS, St. Anne's Engineering College, Chirala, XDRDO scientist, Dr. Santosh Rane, Dean Academics, Sardar Patel, College of Engineering, Mumbai, Dr. Mahdi, Kokos Professor of Civil Geotechnology, Engineering University of Baghdad, President of Iraqi Geotechnic Society, Iraq, Professor Dr. Dilip Kumar M, Director, Professor NFCT and Pro Vice Chancellor, Academic and Research Genius University, India, and His Excellence, the Vice Chancellor, Crown University, International Chartered INC, USS Santa Cruz, in Argentina Partners Constituents campuses worldwide. Thank you, all the premium and the elite speakers at this forum. And I express my hearty gratitude to all the faculties once again from Vishwaniketan institutions, my beloved colleagues of IFRP for the hard work and the tremendous effort they give to make this conference a oath of attending and a grand successful event. Moreover, I express my gratitude once again to each and everyone, the institutional ambassadors, student chapters, faculty chapter members, national and global international advisory committee members of IFERP for their valuable support. I wish everyone a healthy life amid this COVID-19. Again, the words of Bhagavad Gita is reverberating in my mind. Sharbe bhavantu shukina, sharbe shantu niramaya, sharbe badrani pashyantu maakas chudukabhav bhavet. So thank you very much. Wish you all the best for this brilliant and spectacular conference. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that welcoming speech. And now it's our immense pleasure to welcome the Vice Chancellor, Crown University of International Chartered Inc., USA, Santa Cruz in Argentina Partners constitu Constituent Campuses Worldwide. His Excellency UNESCO Lorat, um, World Acclaimed Distinguished Professor, the Vice Chancellor, Crown University International Chartered Inc., postdoctoral e business, grand PhD, postdoc DSC, PhD, BSC, BTEC, IBD, FIBTMN, FATIX, MACM, MCSTA, MC, uh, MSTAN, Senior MIACSIT, FIASR, CITP, MCPN, KOJ, KOGC, KOGHL, FICWLS, FCIEMA, MNDKOJC, a M N D K O L G M N D K O M M N D K O O M N D K O A S M N D K O A M M N D K O A F M N K O C M N K O I M N K O G C M N K O W L N M K O E M N K O T P M N K O T E M N K O S and SEMA F B C S England Fellow Marquis Who's Who in the World Fellow Who's Who in Nigeria L F I C W L S F C I M L Fellow Outstanding Intellectual of Twenty First Century. Cambridge, England, Fellow Europe Association for International Education, Albert Nelson Marquis Lifetime Achievement Award, Winners USA World Leader of the Humanities, United Kingdom, World Distinguished Teaching and Research Professor of Computer Science and Information Technology, Technology and Super Supervisor of 
postdoctoral. He's also obtained dual doctorate degrees and dual bachelor degrees in computer science and information technology, with distinctions as a transferred student from Adam Smith University of America, which was accredited during his studies. He bagged both bachelor and doctorate degrees in information technology at the highest international rank university by four ICU. UNESCO and confirmed by the federal government of Nigeria through the Federal Ministry of Education, Evaluation and Accreditation Department as internationally accredited in Costa Rica with reference number FME S174 C.2 A. Triple one two zero six four three one two, Universidad Universidad Empresarial de Costa Rica, Business University of Costa Rica in Central America through the grant that was sponsored by International Academy for Science and Research. England and Wales to release his outstanding results of both his bachelor and doctoral degree from Universidad Empre Empresarial de Costa Rica in Central America as top up degrees. He recently triple awards in a day, number one Pan of Africa World Distinguished Leadership Hall of Fame 2018. Subtitle. Subtitle World Icon of Humanitarian Services Year 2018 from West Africa Students Union, which was founded in London, United Kingdom in 1924. Number two, Leadership Award of Humanitarian Services by National Association of Polytechnics University. No, Polytechnics Students, rather, Nigeria. Number three, Youth Leadership Ambassador by International Youth Summits. Presented by Mamboroda, Tetiana from Sami State University, Ukraine, from Europe. He received a golden certificate with golden medal after recommendation by several other institutions that have declared him as a world acclaimed distinguished professor emeritus and merit. Honored and ranked by various higher educational institutions and organizations worldwide. And finally ratified by the United Nations Educational Scientific and cultural organization, or also known as the UNESCO, centers Central and South America with a reg R22 LT19 and published with ISBN 978-1571-7412-6 as a most academy excellent world acclaimed distinguished professor emeritus and merit. Honored in rank of computer science, information, and communication technology. Sorry. My apologies. Most uh, world acclaimed distinguished professor emeritus and merit. Honored in rank of computer science, information, and communication technology as a highest UNESCO laureate for an outstanding creative and intellectual achievement. Sir, we request to address this conference. Let us welcome Professor Sir Bashiru Arimu. Hi, sir. Good day. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Thank I'm you. good. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you very much. I tried because this is the middle night here. We are trying to, to, to discuss some for you with you for some time. I'm very happy to be with you. I'm also motivated. I'm very excited to, to be with you just for, just for some time because I, and I have been seeing your activity and I'm very impressed. So I believe this one will be the first step of the sources for us and we have as we have a lot of program to do together in future so definitely uh, the information technology engineering as part of the vision and mission of this uh, conference is our duty to promote this particular conference and to make sure we do another one in future especially when it comes to the technology, engineering, and uh, innovation information technology. As we know today, information, ICT is a part, is play an important role in all the ways of study, and especially in engineering, technology, and others. For how to do research and publish is that we discuss journal and some other Google journal 
is a is, is, is a pride for us. It's our pride. And we as an educator, we are the stakeholder in this world. How to how to teach our students. How we want to teach our students, we have to teach our students to research of what new thing we have discovered. And that people also can utilize it and be a benefit to mankind. So for me to be with you today here and to make sure that uh, we want to talk about the information technology, engineering and technology. For this particular program, is a very, very welcome development, development in which I believe in future, I uh, will also come along uh, with my people from my university. As you know that Crown University is a certain cross province, based in certain cross province in Argentina, South America, and associate and they have a official consistent campus worldwide, especially in Africa and Asia, and associates worldwide. So we are also like the high city in technology, engineering, to promote the global education. In what you make the people also to create to create awareness for the mankind in a, a, and a, you know to create a good innovation on on a, education. So it's a, once again, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I do I have a limited time, but I say let me also try out of my task schedule to find time for you people for us to have a discussion brief. So I've been hearing what different people have spoken, have spoke prior to my discussion, and I'm so impressed with uh, all what you have done for. So I commend your efforts. I commend your effort and uh, your effort is very commendable in fact for this uh, particular virtual conference. I believe if we go for physical conference, we cannot achieve more than this because what we need just to pass an information and to receive information and to utilize it. We are came here together to gather information to also everybody to contribute its own quota how we can develop higher education through the engineering technology and how to also like the high city. Me as a professor of computer science and information technology uh, worldwide, I believe we have a lot of things to do. And this organization that organized this program also have a lot of things to do, in which also after this conference, we can see organize another conference in future and also to publish in different journal and uh, different proceeding of the conference. So once again, I welcome everybody here and appreciate your participation. I'm so impressed uh, to see many of our people that are on the ground. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Yours sincerely is, is UNESCO Laureate Professor Saba Shuruarem, the Vice Chancellor of Crown University, Chatan Crown Province in Argentina, and, uh, and uh, Official Consistent Campus in Africa, Asia, and Associates Worldwide. Thank you again. Thank you. You're welcome. And let us welcome We would like to welcome Dr. Santosh Rani or Rain, Dean Academics, Sandar Patel College of Engineering in Mumbai, to deliver keynote address to our conference. Sir? Hi. I'm available, madam. Good morning. Very good morning to you. Am I audible to you? Yes, you are, sir. Please proceed. Let me share the screen. Go ahead, sir. Is it visible? Yes, it is, sir. Please proceed. Just a minute. <clears throat> oh.
a very good morning to everybody i'm very happy to get associated with international conference on innovation challenges and advances in engineering and technology a road to self reliant india which is organized by mechanical engineering department of vishwaniketan's institutes first of all i would like to give my sincere thanks to our patron professor dr inamdar for giving me an opportunity for sharing my experience in domain of blockchain in the form of keynote speech in this conference at the same time i appreciate my research scholars mr bhavesh kumar pasi and mr sagar dhotre for organizing this conference and i congratulate the entire vishwaniketan team for organizing this esteem or conference and giving the platform to the researchers across the globe to share their experiences in the form of research articles conference has received very good response from the different corners of the world in the form of the research articles my today's topic is exploring the blockchain potential to transform the business operations and i received 30 minutes to discuss based on the same the presentation outline for this topic which was prepared by me contains many case studies however because of the timeline it may not be possible to discuss all the case studies i would like to give some of the case studies in the available timeline madam how many minutes shall i get yes madam okay so we will start with the definition of the blockchain evolution of the blockchain blockchain structure traditional business operations and its pain points then blockchain addresses the pain points of the business operations supply chain objectives why the blockchain is necessary for the digital supply chain then the various case studies and for example pharma industry drug tracking then the end to end blockchain enabled supply chain mid traceability then blockchain enabled cold chain monitoring blockchain enabled supply chain management or blockchain enabled automotive supply chain retail supply chain and the various case study so let us uh, start discussions on the def blockchain we will start with the definition of the blockchain as such the blockchain is a system of recording the information here the blockchain is basically a open ledger and it is a distributed ledger nobody is a authority in that case so whenever the transaction happen the new block is added into this ledger this new block has the connectivity with the previous block that connectivity is termed in terms of hash and this entire open ledger is available with all the partners of the business all the su supply chain partners nobody can tamper it so the trust is created by not trusting anyone trust is created with the help of the technology each block in the chain contain a number of transaction and every time a new transaction occur on the block chain a record of that transaction is added to every participant's ledger so this is a decentralized database managed by multiple participants and it is in the form of distributed ledger technology the figure shows that difference between the centralized decentralized and the distributed ledger technology where in distributed ledger nobody is authority and nobody can change the information in the blockchain the blockchain started in 2008 and in step by step the <clears throat> improvement happened and we are in 2021 and we are going to witness the infrastructure capable with blockchain in coming time 
this is the concept of the blockchain in general the blockchain data structure is given so the blocks are added like block 0 1 2 3 and so on where the connectivity of, of the previous block is given please see the block 0 and block 1 these are connected with this hash so the hash of the previous block is written on the block 1 similarly hash of the previous block is written on block 2 and in this manner the connectivity has been established there is a very clear distinction between what the database and blockchain ledgers are in blockchain there is no admin there is no in charge anyone can access the blockchain in if it is a public blockchain anyone with right proof of work can write on the blockchain blockchains are slow but in when those are compared with the normal database history of the records and the ownership of the digital records are available permanently on the blockchain and these can be accessed from any corner of the world blockchain technologies offer very distinctive features one of the important feature is the visibility across the supply chain then the transparency of across the supply chain visibility means what is exactly happening that one can easily understand by taking a note on the blockchain and the transparency it means why it is happening what is the root cause of this variation deviation so visibility and transparency taken together is called as a traceability and blockchain offer this traceability across the supply chain blockchain state of affairs in the automotive industries where you will find that this this particular study was conducted by ibm in 2018 where 62 percent of the surveyed executives say blockchain will be a disruptive force in the automotive industry within the three years 54 percent of the surveyed executives expect new business models to influence investment in blockchain okay now let us move towards the traditional business operations and what are the activities conducted in this the, in the traditional business operations there are we need to plan plan with reference to what is to be produced where it is to be produced how it is to be produced and many more things and in what quantity it is going to be produced then sourcing who will be the supplier where the suppliers are going to be located what will be the what we are going to source at what time we will be sourcing it in what form we will be sourcing it and many more things then in manufacturing there are many dimensions what we are going to manufacture how we are going to manufacture which technology we are, will be using for manufacturing what kind of measurement system we will be using during the manufacturing and in case of delivery particularly what delivery channels we will be using what mode of transportation we will be using what will be the <clears throat> delivery cycle what will be the replenishment cycle what will be the quantity of the re replenishment and many more things so these are the basic activities in business now these basic activities are connected with number of pain points in case of planning we do not get the appropriate kind of information many times many times the information is deviated from the reality the information is in the different different shape it is distributed it is not compiled in the right way so <clears throat> the the insufficient information is sent to the software that will be the pain point another there is a improper contract requirement flow down unqualified uh, supplier suppliers the suppliers are not capable to manufacture as per the uh, as per the requirement suppliers are not capable to supply as per the requirements there are the variety of the issues connected with the supplier management then in manufacturing yes <clears throat> with reference to the calibration with reference to the measurement system analysis with reference to the, um, the product acceptance criteria with, there are number of 
dimensions where the manufacturing faced the issues. Then, with reference to the delivery, there are the incomplete documentation, defect not captured in the final inspection, there are the discrepancies at the receipt and after installation. So there are various pain points across the supply chain. The supply chain has the pain points with reference to the traceability, what I have already talked about. The traceability is a combination of the visibility and the transparency. Then the compliance, compliance with reference to the standards, government norms, then the flexibility that is the ability to adopt rapidly to event or the issues run various scenarios without significantly increasing operational cost, then stakeholder management. That is here the effective governance in place to enable communication, risk reduction, trust among the involved parties. So in the normal supply chain without the blockchain, there are a variety of the pain points and these pain points can be dramatically addressed by using the blockchain IoT integrated architecture. Here, the blockchain capabilities are shown over here. For example, auditability. The blockchain proves a full audit trail of data, creating an everlasting means of record keeping along the supply chain. Then it is immutability. All blockchain transactions are timestamped. It means that anybody can identify at what particular time the particular transaction happened. Then it is temper proof. Nobody can change it. Even if somebody try to change it at his place, the transaction is available at all the players. And when somebody try to alter it, it doesn't match with the uh, records available at other players. So finally, <clears throat> that tampering is not possible, providing a single source of data integrity. Then the smart contracts, the blockchain uh, player can have the agreement and based on the agreement, what data is, can be shared, what data uh, cannot be shared, all these things are already recorded, already um, <clears throat> agreed upon and that is called as a smart contract. So the smart con uh, contract will give the necessary <clears throat> uh, access to the information from the different players. Then the supply chain objectives, here we have the various supply chain objectives like reduction in the inventory. So customer expects the best quality products and the services. But for that purpose, industry has to uh, work on many different objectives, particularly reduction in the inventories, better order fill rates, reduction in the working capital, improvement in the gross margins, reduction in planning cycle time, improvement in the forecasting accuracy, and so on. So these are the various objectives of the supply chain. And these objectives are appropriately addressed by using the blockchain. I will not discuss about this industry 4.0 in this case. Now in the supply chain, when we expect the blockchain to be implemented, it is necessary that all the supply chain players are <clears throat> implementing the blockchain. It is like a telephone. If I have a phone and I wanted to make a call to my friend, then my friend should also have the telephone. Otherwise, I cannot make a call. In the same manner, in the supply chain, all the supply chain partners should have the blockchain implemented so that they will share the information as per the smart contract and they can reap the benefit, they can harness the benefit of the blockchain enabled supply chain. So in one given supply chain, there are the variety of the players available. For example, here it's a factory. It is a original equipment manufacturer. 
then here transport service provider then warehouse warehouse manager <clears throat> then here the customer and here the uh, people who are carrying out the marketing so all these are connected with each other and they are sharing the real time data as they are sharing the real time data this real time data is being accessed in the form of uh, through the blockchain iot integrated architecture fine why blockchain is necessary for the digital supply chain there is a limited visibility of the products so there is gap exists between the systems within and across the enterprise boundaries high transaction cost like current supply chain transaction cost are high due to multiple ecosystem partners due to shorter product life cycle any variation or delay has high transaction cost then monitoring counterfeit and quality of the products limited automation of a certain product quality in transit and taking proactive actions then difficult to track and trace counterfeit products the magazine like business standard says there are as good as 40% fake products are available in them so 40% fake auto parts are available in the market then meeting the compliance requirements regulatory compliance requirements are country specific and cost of non compliance is very high it is difficult to implement effective supply chain compliance program across the multiple partners okay now i shall move ahead this is a digitally connected supply chain where the blockchain plays a important role now in the given supply chain there are the voice of the digital twin the digital twin it is a digital <clears throat> replica of the physical asset so in coming era we are going to create we means the world is going to create the digital twin for the key assets in the supply chain in the enterprise so these digital twin will facilitate us to control the behavior of the physical asset in for the unpredictable uh, conditions then there is a voice of customer voice of factory voice of the product and voice of the customers so all these are the entities of the supply chain and they have their own voice there are the various <clears throat> activities like engineering and design order management material planning prototype and manufacture shipping and logistics real world field use and service and depot so engineering and design needs <clears throat> product development and ideation so similarly the material planning needs supply chain management integrated business planning then prototype and manufacture needs erp supply chain management and so on so in this manner there are the different modules in one supply chain and different module need the different technologies we these all these are expected to be connected with enterprise iot and big data blockchain cloud services then adaptive intelligence and machine learning advanced user interaction here the blockchain play a role where each and every transaction is being added in the open ledger and all these players of the supply chain can see that transaction based on which their decisions are in the real time and their decisions are very much relevant that is the facility so here we have shown the blockchain enabled supply chain management where the supplier we are <clears throat> ensuring that the supplier is carrying out the ethical sourcing then the manufacturer measure and reduce the environmental impact complete the data visibility on single shared ledger so we we are sure that the manufacturer is using the environment friendly manufacturing processes and um, 
creating minimum carbon emissions then the regulator reduced need of regulators by using the blockchain enabled supply chain management the requirement of regulator is reduced dramatically in case of logistics the automated real time transport updates are possible with the help of the blockchain in the context of wholesaler managing the stock with the real time data where the bullwhip effect has been eliminated completely because everybody knows what is the real time demand of a particular entity what is the real time demand of a particular product then the retailer certainty of the product provenance and the authenticity product provenance means what what is the source of this product from where it has been received and what is the authenticity whether it is the it is the same thing what is written what is uh, written on the package and then consumer the supply chain insight empowers informed decision making so all these different different players will receive the positive impact by using the blockchain enabled supply chain manager now i shall take you to this end to end blockchain enabled supply chain in case of replacement of spare part when the car is on the warranty now let us think about it here what is the requirement our requirement is to replace the spare part so spare part manufacturer upload the data on the spare parts each part is tagged with rfid chip and the qr code then the car manufacturer does not have a big role in this only he get the information on the part number serial number date of manufacturing and the quality checks the pair moves from original equipment manufacturer to the distributor the car manufacturer only get the details about it now this distributor get info from the spare part or the equipment manufacturer if the distributor select the suitable third party logistic service provider based on the fully available data on customer and with the delivery date the third party logistic service provider is informed about the origin and the destination where the spare is expected to be uh, shipped then he reviews the best possible route cost incurred and optimizes the network flow the dealer has full visibility on the delivery time provides an end customer application and provide timely update to the customer and the customer is enjoying the benefit of this blockchain enabled automotive supply chain we are on time delivery the customer get full details about the replaced part complete history of the car is available fine now i shall take you to some other dimensions with reference to the blockchain okay now <clears throat> the blockchain enabled drug supply chain in the normal supply chain without the blockchain it is a simple linear supply chain linear supply chain means the there are the raw material suppliers then there are the production houses there are the distributors there are the hospitals and the patients in case of a drug supply chain the patient really do not know from where the drug is received okay let us take an example of <clears throat> covid vaccine most majority of us have already received the covid vaccine doses now how many of us are really aware about the complete uh, logistic part of the covid vaccine as per the department of biotechnology of india all indian covid 19 vaccines have to be stored in the temperature band of 2 degree to 8 degree celsius as per the business today given by given on 22nd june 2021 so the question is the vaccines what we have received whether those vaccines were really kept at this 
temperature band the vaccines when they were produced and the vaccine the same vaccine is transported right from the manufacturer to the <clears throat> uh, hospital and till the patient receive the vaccine whether the vaccine was really preserved in that particular temperature band recommended temperature band nobody is aware about it and it is our <clears throat> right to know whether the vaccine was stored at the appropriate temperature band however we have kept the faith and we say that okay fine the vaccine was stored however the reality may, may be something different so the point of discussion is very clear over here if we use the blockchain enabled drug supply chain then all these players including the patient pharmacy distributor all these players will know the complete history of the vaccine so instead of a linear supply chain we have the blockchain enabled supply chain where the patient production houses the distributors the raw material suppliers pharmacy logistic service provider the com company regulators all these are connected with each other through the blockchain and they can really track the medicine okay now here the fake drug kill more than 2 lakhs of 50000 children a year doctors mark doctors have called for an urgent international effort to combat a pandemic of bad drugs that is thought to kill hundreds of thousands of people globally every year so the annual death from the fake medicines that is up to 1 million people over 2050 250000 children due to the counterfeit drugs okay this counterfeit drugs are a dollar 3 billion industry so these counterfeit drugs enter the mainstream through the inefficient supply chain that is given in the source blockchain healthcare specialist course gp so how the counterfeit drug uh, cannot be entered in the <clears throat> blockchain enabled supply chain please see this diagram here this is a manufacturer uses a unique code to mark the product he also create the hash so this blockchain stores the information then the drug sent to the wholesaler the wholesaler verify the drug origin and the blockchain stores the information now this wholesaler send the drug to the pharmacist the pharmacist verify the drug origin the blockchain stores the information pharmacist send the drug to the patient patient verifies the drug origin the blockchain stores the information in this entire blockchain enabled drug supply chain there is no possibility of the drug repackaging by the secondary wholesaler and there is no possibility of <coughs> inserting the counterfeit drugs into the uh, blockchain enabled drugs supply chain so that's the way the blockchain will help us these are the various benefits of the blockchain it is tamper proof no intermediaries smart contracts reconciling data and so on now i shall take you to some important case studies let us take this case study with reference to the meat traceability the companies can use the distributed ledger system to record the product status at each stage of the production the records are permanent and immutable in this case there are the players like supplier producer distributor supplier upload the data with reference to the antibacterial fodder the chicken tagged with rfid chip provides the free range then producer get the information on the required cuts prepare the meat accordingly add the qr code to the packaging 
the distributor automatically receives the notification about the receipt of the chicken products chooses the best suited third party logistics service provider based on all available customer data its system let the company see where each packet of the meat come from each processing and storage step in the supply chain and the product sale by the day in the event of the product recall the company can also see which batches are affected and who bought them so that's the beauty of the blockchain enabled supply chain for the given product i shall skip some of the cases because of the timeline okay here this is the retail supply chain you can see this retail supply chain now here there are the four different players one is a farm another is a packager another is a carrier and r is a retailer so farm is shown by f packager p c carrier retailer r so <clears throat> farm uh, at the farm the produce details those things the farm details are added to the blockchain that is the level 1 when the farm details are added to the blockchain the carrier packager and the retailer everybody knows it okay everybody can see that detail then the material is sent to the next stage at the packaging at packaging the packaging details are added to the blockchain the farm produce is appropriately packed now the <clears throat> farm producer farmer then carrier owner and the retailer they receive the information then the matter moves to the next stage where the carrier details are added to the blockchain so the other players receive the information next matter moves to the retailer retailer details are added to the blockchain at that time other players receive the information in this manner the entire supply chain journey is made available through a scan to the customer so customer knows what the product is and what is the quality of the product and the complete history is available with the uh, customer now in the market there are a lot of organic products available but are we sure that those organic products are really organic many people sell the organic products available in the uh, in the market and customers have to pay as good as uh, two times uh, prices for these organic products but the question remain unanswered whether those organic products are really organic who knows so these are the real time challenges these real time challenges can be addressed by the blockchain okay now i shall take you to the case warranty and maintenance of the automobile so this is with reference to our own research article myself and my uh, research scholar the article is stakeholders involvement in green supply chain a perspective of blockchain iot integrated architecture it was published in management of environment quality international journal of emerald scopus index international journal so the case is with reference to the warranty and the maintenance of automobiles the challenge is insurance frauds use of counterfeit components as spare parts lack of documentation records related to warranty maintenance of the automobiles are challenges faced by the manufacturers as well as insurance companies so what are the solutions for this blockchain in architecture could eliminate 30% of the total warranty cost which are due to poor practices this could be done by implementing a warranty management system in which all the claims spare parts stock and time spent repairing 
vehicles are recorded within a single database. IoT in architecture will facilitate real-time data acquisition during use and maintenance of the automobiles. So who are the st stakeholders in this? The insurance agencies, customers, servicing stations, manufacturers are the key stakeholders. What are the benefits? The data integrity, up-to-date records are very crucial part of the automobile industry. This is achieved to a great extent by blockchain IoT integrated architecture. Then here we have the vehicle registration system. In vehicle registration system case, the real challenge is with reference to the registration of the used vehicle. So let us think about it. Registration of transfer of a used vehicle is a time consuming process that requires the buyer or the dealer on the behalf of the buyer to submit the multiple online or uh, paper forms. Processing of the transfer by the government registrar requires check of the vehicle against multiple third party database for outstanding finance, insurance write off, stolen and scrap. So, who are the stakeholders? Manufacturer, dealer, license insurance, issuing company, this leasing, end users, scrap merchants are involved in this vehicle registration system. So the solution for this challenge is design analysis and material related information could be shared on the blockchain network, which eliminate failure of system and create a sustainable business. So autonomous cars, smart parking, auto, uh, automatic traffic control are some of the applications of blockchain IoT in automotive industry. By doing this, overall processing time for the registration can be reduced dramatically generating cost saving for all the parties involved. A vehicle registration ecosystem when coupled with the blockchain IoT ensures tamper-proof records of data transactions and maximum efficiency for all the stakeholders. So these are the case studies what I have uh, talked about. There is one case study with reference to the oil and gas industry what I would like to quickly go through this in the next five minutes and then I shall stop. This case study is again based on our own research work uh, in the oil and gas industry, application of the blockchain IoT integrated architecture. So this uh, paper is already published in a benchmarking and international journal with the necessary, we will also receive the citations for this research article. The purpose is to offer the blockchain IoT integrated architecture for the oil and gas industry. The scenario, let me explain the scenario directly. This is the scenario. In general, there was a, <clears throat> there is a uh, oil and gas industry with 450 plus uh, pumping stations and the 450 plus uh, oil wells scattered across around 400 plus square kilometer. It's a very big area. So, there are some or other uh, maintenance calls and for those maintenance calls more than 6500 uh, <clears throat> breakdown maintenance hours have been lost and for that maintenance the technicians and the team has to travel from the control room to the destination and that is the unnecessary transportation. And that was around 25,000 plus miles of breakdown maintenance uh, related travel. And due to that, there was a huge impact on the profit margin. Particularly, there was a huge loss of 50 million plus dollars. Because here, that there was a manual inspection, the work orders, are manually created in enterprise applications, the job schedule and dispatch, those things were done. And after <clears throat> completion of the work at the uh, work site, the technician has to come back to the control room, technician has to manually enter the data into the ERP, where there are the great possibilities that uh, some of the data is not entered, some of the data is deviated from the reality, and so on. So the 
<clears throat> the features were like this there was a lack of automated inspection there is a high turnaround time there is a high downtime there is no visibility on the vulnerable equipment the lack of safety measures lack of asset utilization and many more so this is the real time challenge of the oil and gas uh, industry and the one of the organization that is uh, larsen and tubro has taken this as a um, case <clears throat> so my research scholar works in lnt and we try to develop this now the root cause analysis and the reliability assessment was carried out the fault tree analysis was developed with 300 events the failure data from the enterprise application was used to find the failure probability it was uh, established that the reliability of the existing system is only 4.42% for 10000 hours of operation so when i say system it comprises of 450 plus pumping systems taken together so the fault tree analysis for the pump assembly is carried out here the motor fail due to the different reasons like fail to start <coughs> rotor damage stator damage rotor bar failure bearing failure shaft broken the coupling may fail due to the hub damage key failure flange fastener and many more similarly mounting failure due to the uh, base frame failure foundation failure and so on then there are again the failures which have been listed down in the fault tree analysis the data was collected before the improvement okay this data was collected from the erp and enterprise asset management this data was connected with the breakdown maintenance work orders all the components are connected in series and the system reliability can be computed by multiplying the reliabilities of the each component and so on we have identified the pump parameters like flow pressure vibration temperature rpm and so on we have given the justification for the selection of this particular component we have also identified what are the effects observed with reference to the particular parameter and what are the causes of failure for example flow there are the insufficient flow and what are the causes of failure for this the pump set failure like cavitation broken impeller improper impeller insufficient speed blockage insufficient mkh air vapor trap like this then pressure insufficient pressure pump dry run excessive pressure for insufficient pressure the pump set failure bump uh, bent vents cavitation rotating backwards speed to low broken or impeller uh, improper impeller these are some of the uh, uh, causes of the failure then excessive pressure that may be due to the water hammer failure and erosion of the sails casing vent blockages etc then vibrations why there are the excessive vibration due to the coupling failure shaft misalignment loose mounting imbalance of the shafts bearing failure water hammer steel failure and many more so in this manner the detail <coughs> uh, analysis was carried out for each parameter the effects are observed and the causes of failure are identified i have given only the <coughs> partial uh, data over here partial figure over here then here we propose the iot architecture where there is a industrial pump this industrial pump has the existing automation layer that is the plc and the scada where the suction flow rate delivery flow rate suction pressure delivery pressure or some operation on premises database available now there are the external sensors these are the machining operational parameters particularly which will be capturing the data with reference to the motor temperature shaft and bearing temperature mo motor speed electrical signature vibration number the number of revolutions and so on this data is sent to the iot cloud through iot gateway and before sending it to the cloud the edge connectivity edge computing these are used particularly the data is analyzed before sending it to the cloud if there are some urgent requirement if there are some urgent <clears throat> cases to be handled then the data is analyzed where it is uh, collected and the decisions are taken and based on that the asset can be appropriately controlled that is the 
requirement and that requirement is fulfilled by using this edge uh, computing and edge connectivity and then the data is sent to the iot cloud platform where it is appropriately stored and it is also analyzed with the help of the big data analysis where the business inferences has been uh, uh, derived based on this business inferences the assets the uh, industrial pump industrial pumping system those assets are appropriately controlled but still there are a lot of challenges what are the challenges the challenges with reference to the centralized processing storage high processing time due to the centralization there is a lack of scalability to meet the growing needs of large iot ecosystem then high infrastructure and maintenance cost associated with the centralized clouds large server farms and networking equipment data security breaches can be very critical in case human health or important transactions are dependent on iot these are the iot related challenges now <clears throat> when this is applied to our pumping system one can imagine that if there let us say that a particular shaft uh, bearing assembly is carried out and that shaft failure or excessive bearing vibration takes place then why that excessive bearing why the huge vibrations are happening nobody is aware about it what was the problem whether the balancing was appropriately done before the assembly so these are the questions unanswered particularly <clears throat> the manufacturer will say that it was done but the customers are not aware about it so there is a lack of traceability that is the real time issue okay so when the iot is established by doing this the operational survival probability has been increased from 4.42% to 51.46% for 10000 hours of operation of the pumps effective predictive maintenance and on time maintenance will reduce asset breakdown by at least 15% and enhance the asset life by approximately 10% so these are the benefits there are some limitations the limitations are with reference to the trust issues between the parties then a lack of scalability to meet the growing needs of large iot ecosystem now let us look at this situation where proposed blockchain iot integrated architecture these are the players like transporter end customer technician original equipment manufacturer bearing vendor shaft vendor and the blockchain has these features like decentralized distributed ledger com complete visibility and the traceability on all the activities across the supply chain the transparency and the trust between the parties by not trusting anyone the trust is created by the technology the worry free transactions tamper proof records 24 by 7 365 days availability of the data which can be accessed from any corner of the world so these are the Uh, possibilities by using blockchain iot integrated architecture so here when there are the excessive vibrations in the given assembly one can easily track that a particular uh, shaft it was not appropriately balanced and hence uh, and that shaft was assembled and due to that there are the uh, vibrations so such kind of a traceability is possible similarly the manufacturer can also trace that a <clears throat> product is not appropriately used in reality the product is abused by the customer the product is uh, not maintained by the customer and hence there are the deviations there are the failures so the customer cannot unnecessarily blame the manufacturer so in the reality most of the times you will find that the customers are blaming the manufacturer in reality the customers are abusing the products so one can easily keep the track of these things and by doing this all these issues can be sorted out without discussions because the things are available directly on the uh, open ledger in the form of blockchain so everybody can see what is happening in the reality okay so the issues are sorted out uh, issues 
will never take place. And in this manner, the blockchain IoT integrated architecture will give the effectiveness and the efficiency of the business operations. With this, I would like to close my <clears throat> keynote speech and I'm thankful to all the audience for patiently listening to me. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, madam. Uh, you may, you may, hold on. The screen, hold on. Um, let me, there you go. All right. Thank you so much. And all thank you so much to all our eminent keynote spe uh, speech speeches. And now we are stepping into our technical sessions. So again, um, for the main session for um, please check your agenda. Um, those that are under um, our technical session chair, Rahul Vishwanath Dandage will stay here in the main room. Then, yeah, um, we have two breakout rooms. Please go just right at the bottom part of your Zoom screen. You will see there more and click on breakout rooms. Now, in breakout rooms, you will see their room one and room two. Go ahead and join your respective rooms, please. If you will have any problems still in joining the breakout room, please shoot us a message on, uh, on the chat box and our technical team will transfer you. Happy Teacher's Day to everybody. And we will start in a few. Better. One moment. Hello, good morning everyone. I hope my voice is audible. Please uh, drop me a message if my voice is audible. Uh, yes, you are audible. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So, we will start with our presentation. Topic of the presentation is experimental investigation of cylindrical embedded pad evaporative cooler. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can you um, please pause the presentation? I will introduce the technical session chair first. 
I will just make sure that all the session chairs are in place already before we start. Can you give me at least two minutes? Yes. Thank you so much. One moment, please. Again, this main session will cater to technical session one. Please make sure to check your agenda. And let us welcome our technical session chair, which is the head of Department of Automobile Engineering and at Rahendra Main College of Engineering and Technology, Ratnagiri. Let us welcome Dr. Rahul Veshwanath Dandagi. Sir? Hello, good, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. We will now start the technical session. All right, let us welcome. I also would like to welcome all the participants of the technical session one. And I would like to reiterate and to remind everyone that you are um, each presenter is allotted a total of 15 minutes uh, for the for the whole presentation. Um, I don't know, 10 minutes for the presentation, like 10 minutes for the full presentation and um, five minutes for the question and answer. So a total of 15 minutes. All right, let us welcome our first presenter, Kishore Main or Mani, to present the experimental investigation of cylindrical imbibe pad evaporative cooler. Hello. Thank Hi, thank you. Yes, I can hear you and I can see your screen. Please have it on a presentation mode and you may proceed. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thanks a lot. So today we will discuss about our presentation, experimental investigation of cylindrical imbibed pad evaporative cooler. So, as far as air conditioning is concerned, most of the air conditioning devices are compressor-based energy uh, air conditioning, as well as it requires refrigerant. So, as far as uh, environment is concerned, uh, the ref use of refrigerant uh, is harmful for the ozone layer depletion, as well as it is very harmful for the global warming. So, uh, it is highly essential to uh, go for eco-friendly air conditioning system. If we considered uh, any vapor compression system, uh, then the, in any uh, commercial building, 70% of the energy consumption is by air conditioning only. So uh, to reduce the energy consumption by air conditioning, we need some kind of eco-friendly air conditioning system which can reduce the cost as well as which can reduce the environmental degradation. So one of the alternative is evaporative cooling where uh, there is no refrigerant, water is used as a refrigerant and uh, it has very low energy requirement compared to conventional vapor compression refrigeration system. So uh, for our topic, we decided to work on the performance improvement of the conventional evaporative cooling system. So uh, now, what is evaporative cooling? When air and water comes in direct contact with each, uh, when air and water comes in contact, the both air and water gets cooled up to its saturation temperature. So we get a cooling effect. So that is the evaporative cooling technique. On psychometric chart, you can say, uh, you can see here, A is the point entry uh, where is the inlet temperature of air and C is the outlet temperature of air. So when uh, air and water comes in direct contact with each other, both the temperatures of air and water 
try to reaches the saturation temperature that is point number b but in actual case uh, the temperature can drop down to point c as evaporative cooling system there is no compressor or um, no any moving part uh, no any equipment uh, no major equipment installed the cost is very less compared to vapor compression system and we can provide cooling uh, by using only a fan and water there are three types of evaporative cooling one is direct type evaporative cooling where uh, air and water comes in direct contact with each other second one is indirect type evaporative cooling where water and air uh, comes in indirect contact with each other you can see this uh, image where water and air comes in contact with each other through an heat exchanger so there is no direct contact and third is two stage evaporative cooling where there is a first stage is indirect type evaporative cooling and there is a second is direct stage direct type evaporative cooling in direct type evaporative cooling as air and water comes in direct contact with each other the moisture air gets cool but it adds moisture to it in indirect type evaporative cooler in indirect type evaporative cooling as air and water are not in direct contact with each other it air only gets cooled there is no uh, moisture addition takes place during the process and if we consider the third stage where there is first indirect cooling and then direct cooling so you can see on the chart as uh, there is a indirect cooling happens there is a sensible cooling so the dry bulb and wet bulb temperature both the temperature goes down and then the direct cooling provides uh, cooling with humidification so we can we can see on the chart this two stage cooling provides better results compared to direct type and indirect type cooling so as our objective was to find the performance improvement in conventional evaporative cooling system we referred various research papers having um, studies on evaporative cooling technique so there are some uh, multiple papers you can see uh, this philips guy has uh, have studied effect of evaporative cooling with cooling coil and uh, multiple positions of coil fan uh, direct evaporative cooling units also uh, some other in, uh, some other investigators also did experimental analysis with multiple types of cooling media also studies on uh, different types of cooling shapes also different types of parameters they have studied on different types of parameter like air velocity or water temperature or uh, different conditions of ambient conditions so these are some of the uh, re reference papers so our objective of this study is performance improvement of conventional conventional evaporative cooling system and process parameter optimization so we have rectangular type evaporative cooler and uh, we try to optimize its performance by by vary, varying the shape of the cooler also for performance improvement we try to optimize the process parameters like phase velocity or um, the cooling media that is pad cellulose pads we uh, we use different types of cooling pads to analyze the effects of different parameters on the performance of evaporative cooling system 
so as per our objective this is the conventional type evaporative cooler where you can see it is in rectangular in shape so there are three sides there are pads and on another side there is a fan so with this reference in mind we try to develop another heat uh, another uh, another evaporative cooler having similar specification so considering this conventional cooler we we have taken we have considered this points so the cellulose pad area we have considered similar fan selection similar pump selection and similar pump med uh, pad media uh, to to analyze it with uh, different shape evaporative cooler so these are some calculations like area and then uh, fan selection calculations pump selection calculations and this is the uh, pad media this is cellular pads which is normally used for evaporative cooling purpose and it is widely used in the industry so there are basically two types of pads we used 7090 and another is 5090 so 7090 pad having 7 mm fluid thickness this h you can see h this h is 7 mm for this pad 709 mm and this is 5 mm for 509 mm uh, 5090 pad model and also we use multiple uh, pads multiple uh, pad thickness to have detail analysis so uh, considering this as a reference conventional uh, evaporative cooler as a reference we develop cylindrical uh, cooler these are the specifications like uh, water tank size uh, surface area pump calculation so this is exactly same with the conventional cooler so these are some uh, images from the development phase this is the water tank you can see this is the pad frame structure to hold a media pads this is the top so this is during the development phase uh, these are the pa multiple pads we um, we have cylindrical shape so we need to have a fi proper fixing arrangement so as per uh, the requirement we did this and this is this is the final setup we have for experimentation this is the water tank at the bottom this is the cellular pads uh, then there are there were two fans and this is the pipe for uh, pipe for water circulation and pump is uh, installed in the water tank so this is our experimental setup this is our uh, cylindrical pad evaporative cooler so for out for air temperature measurement we have a psychrometer for water temperature measurement we have a thermometer um, we have energy meter installed to measure the energy consumption also uh, to perform the, to measure the cooling effect we have psychrometer to measure the outlet conditions outlet air conditions also for air velocity measurement we have anemometer so we try to compare the performance of these two evaporative coolers one is a rectangular type evaporative cooler and another is a cylindrical shape evaporative cooler you can also see this this is another shape where we have inclined top the cylindrical pads are uh, installed on the top surface so these are the three different shapes we develop to uh, verify the performance so now we use cellulose pads for evaporative cooling purpose so these are some physical properties of the pad media uh, this is the uh, this is the porosity uh, for 5090 model 95% porous 7090 model it is 97% porous 
and this is the density of the material now we can we can see the results this is the runtime test runtime test with pad 5090 of 2 mm thickness and we can see on the x axis there is a time and y axis there is a temperature drop you can see almost 5 minutes is required to get a maximum temperature drop it is the initial time where uh, it is the time required to wait the complete cellulose pads to get wet so that time is required um, during to get a uh, maximum temperature drop we try to optimize the air flow rate so um, so we uh, we did um, experimentation with varying the flow rates so as per uh, different flow rates you can see temperature drop achieved was uh, was highest at 11000 1100 cfm and as cfm increases the temperature drop reduces so with with multiple thickness you can say for 1 inch thickness it is 1100 uh, but with higher thickness this point goes shifts to right means with higher thickness we can have more air flow rate so this is our results this with 1 inch thick we got optimum flow rate at 111 uh, cfm per square feet that is fpm with 2 inch thickness this flow rate increases with 3 inch thickness flow rate increases also you can see with fluid size with uh, with smaller fluid size we have receive, we have got higher flow rate another test we carried out is pressure drop across pad, uh, pad media so you can you can say with rise in thickness with rise in thickness pressure drop increases and with increase in pressure drop the fan consumption increases so this is the case where you can say uh, as air flow increases the pressure drop increases also with the rise in uh, pad thickness the pressure drop increases so you have to optimize between the pressure drop and the temperature drop because uh, with higher thickness temperature drop also increases but pressure drop also increases so with increase in pressure drop the fan consumption also increases that we need to take care and as per requirement we have to design the system then we carried out tests considering effect of climate conditions and flow direction so as the evaporative cooling technique is basically depends on the wet bulb depression that is the difference between the dry bulb temperature and wet bulb temperature so maximum is the wet bulb depression maximum is the cooling we can achieve so you can see the wet bulb depression increases temperature drop also increases and we carried out with two types of flows one is a conventional flow and another is a reverse flow so conventional flow is like um so there is a pad and then there is a fan so air is coming from the pad and going out through the fan and the reverse flow is like there is a fan and uh, we have installed fan before the pad so there is a heat addition from the uh, from the fan and then the air goes to the ceiling uh, goes to the cooling media that is the cellular pad and then it goes out so with the rise in sensible heat at the inlet we have found good result with the reverse flow as i already told you this is the effect of pad thickness with increase in pad thickness the temperature of achieved is higher as with rise in pad thickness the contact time between the air and water increases also the surface area increases so we got more 
temperature drop, we achieved high performance. Effect of pad fluid size. There were two fluid size, 7 mm and 5 mm. As 5 mm fluid size, uh, having more surface area and the contact time between um, air and water is more in this case with fly mm fluid size. Therefore, the temperature of acid was higher. This is the comparison sheet between the performance of three different shape coolers. One is this blue line is our conventional cooler. Then um, top line is our cylindrical cooler. And third, uh, this gray line is uh, cylindrical top cooler. So you can see the difference between the temperature drop. We, we can have, uh, with modification in the shape of the evaporative cooler, we found great results with a 30% hike in the temperature drop values. And this is the energy consumption chart. Energy consumption with higher uh, air quantity, the fan consumption increases. So overall, the energy consume, consumed by the evaporative cooler increases. This is the energy efficiency ratio we calculated as per the energy consumption value. So I want to conclude along with this side. So we have developed a cylindrical shape cooler and we have tested as per uh, standard procedure. We have tested cellulose pad media. Then we have analyzed the cooler and we found that with modification in the uh, with modification in the cooler cooler shape, we found great results. Also, we optimize different parameters like uh, air velocity, pad thickness, fluid size to have optimum performance. And as a result, we found 33% higher temperature drop compared with conventional cooler uh, with our cylindrical shape cooler. These are some of the reference. Thank you. Now you can ask, question, ask me questions. If, Questions? Yeah, question. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, overall, this was a good presentation. Uh, I think you have done a lot of efforts on the experimentation part, and uh, you have come out with uh, different results. Just one question is from your uh, perspective what are the drawbacks of this evaporative uh, refrigeration system? Basically, sir, the performance of the evaporative cooling system is you can't control the performance of the evaporative cooling system because it, it is based on the ambient condition. In, uh, in dry region, evaporative cooling is, uh, gives you great performance. But in, uh, in, hot, in humid conditions like Mumbai or Ratnagiri, uh, the conditions are worse for evaporative cooling because the wet bulb depression value is very less in humid conditions, but in dry condition, wet bulb value is very high. So uh, we have, uh, we can get more cooling in dry region. Okay. So just, uh, can you go to the title slide? So is it a part of any uh, project work related to graduation or post-graduation or PhD? Yeah, I, we did this <clears throat> during my master's. Okay. So, overall, it is a good presentation. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, we have this uh, experimental setup also, we have developed. Also, as a um, part of industry, I have developed different types of coolers also for industrial application. So, uh, I found great results with evaporative cooling technique. For one of my installation in Ahmedabad, I have developed one evaporative cooler with indirect direct evaporative with two-stage cooling. And uh, my client is having 25 degrees temperature maintained in the in his uh, bungalow in summer in Ahmedabad. So evaporative cooling system is um, we can promote such type of system. And as it is eco-friendly system and energy consumption is very less, 
so one can go for it okay good thank you thank you thank, thank you so sir. much Thank you so much for that presentation. And next, I would like to welcome Soben Sobendra Capri to present the paper about the experimentation and material of brake shoes for its effectiveness using reverse engineering and additive manufacturing. Again, let us welcome Shubendra Capri. To oh, there. Thank you. I can now see your screen, but I cannot hear you. Hello. There now you go. All right. Yes, I can hear you now. Please proceed. Uh -huh. Good morning to everyone. Today is I present a seminar on a experimentation on materials of brake shoe for its effectiveness using reverse engineering and additive manufacturing. Uh, this biography. Abstract. Uh, in car stability, the brake mechanism, airbags, good suspension, good handling, and safe cornering, etc., are the most basic and significant factors. The most powerful and vital device in the whole safety system is the braking system. The brake shoe is the important part of the our uh, brake uh, braking system uh, in the drum brake. Here. Uh, in the various techniques, the brake shoe generally uh, made up of a steel, copper, iron, or a, uh, several alloys with a durable and a heat resistance quality. But, but uh, in this uh, paper, uh, the various composite materials, including ABS, and have examined to decide the material is used for the shoe for improved result and accuracy. Introduction. Uh, there are some kinds of uh, brakes, including a battery brake or a disc brake. Since we are aware of the brake mechanism, the drum brake is involved pad, brake drum, tire cylinder, and brake pad. The drum brake is found in uh, different motor vehicles, such as a commutator uh, car, small lorries, and uh, much of the two wheelers. The brake uh, is a function that may help to store and then release the energy that is derived from the movement of the moving mechanism. You can slow down or halt the motion by means by my means of using the uh, brake pedal on your uh, bicycle. Then uh, the drum drum brake. A drum brake uh, is a brake that employs a drum with shoes or pad that push between a revolving compound and stationary drum. In a drum brakes, the drum rests on the shoes, which causes them a rub on the internal surface of the drum. Here we uh, see the uh, drum brake image. Here we uh, see the brake shoe. This is a brake lining attached to the brake shoe. And this whole system is a brake drum. Then uh, components of the brake shoe. The first component is a backing plate. It, here is a back plate. It is also known as a torque plate uh, because due to uh, torque absor absorption, it also known as a torque plate. Uh, it is a base component and it is a support the whole elements or a part of, uh, of the uh, drum brake. Then another component is a brake drum. Uh, this connect with the axle by a crank or a wheel axle. When a driver applies the brake, the uh, lining presses against the wheel and uh, it rotates the axle, uh, then the slowing or stopping the ve vehicle's uh, movement. Then uh, lining. Uh, lining is attached to the our uh, brake shoe, uh, then in order to withstand heat and maintain an undiminished uh, friction forces, uh, then then is a wheel cylinder. In a wheel cylinder, each wheel has one wheel cylinder, which function as a brake. Two pistons are found in this uh, wheel cylinder. One is either end of the cylinder. Then uh, this uh, image shows the various components of the drum brake. Then the, our main part is a brake shoe. 
in a brake shoe is a part of a braking mechanism of vehicles or trails that holds the brake lining in the cylinder the brake shoe is a word that use a describe a system that works a slow down its rate of speed generally uh, uh, this uh, drum brake is not used but uh, but uh, when we parking uh, our vehicle or in the uh, heavy vehicle the brake shoe are used the shoe and uh, we uh, wheel are physically connected for moving a shoe create a braking force as the pressure is exerted between the lining and uh, interior of the drum we favor uh, using a parking brake uh, due to drum greater efficiency then method used to analyze the brake shoe the first method used is a 3d scanning first uh, i have to collect a uh, one um, part one old part of the brake shoe uh, i have to use a splendor bikes uh, brake shoe and then uh, uh, from this method uh, 3d scanning this scan this uh, uh, original part to proceed uh, the further development or analysis uh, in this method and uh, it measuring the actual dimension and appearance a real base object or the design from photos using uh, proper optics and then using those to 3d printing to extract data uh, it is known as a 3d scanning it is a primary uh, step of the method then uh, in the reverse engineering uh, here we in the image uh, shown the five components of the reverse engineering process or uh, uh, the first one is the original means in the reverse engineering process we collect the original uh, part we have to uh, if that is a brake or any part then scan that 3d part and uh, then this uh, scanning will uh, provide us a particular data then this data is uh, uh, proceed for the further development if any changes on this data as per the our original part and then change on the software then uh, using prototype machine we collect the uh, new part uh, from this original uh, original data then uh, rapid prototyping uh rapid rapid prototyping is the fast fabrication of a physical part it is a model or assembly using a 3d computer aided design and the creation of the part model or assembly is usually uh, completed using additive manufacturing or more commonly known as a, a 3d printing also the in this um, uh, rapid prototyping uh, some techniques are used the one one is a stereolithography uh, also known as sla in this uh, technique uh, was a very first method of uh, 3d printing to work it uh, work by using a, a tank of photosynthesis liquid this liquid is turned into solid layer uh, through computer control uv lights then another method is a selective laser sintering method means sls Uh, it uses layers of powder to create prototype uh, this technology used for metal and uh, plastic prototyping then another one is selective laser uh, melting slm it is used by uh, automobile parts or aerospace part or in a uh, medical also use in this uh, process electron beam or uh, high powder laser to melt layer by layer to create a prototype part then another method is a laminated object manufacturing means lom it work by assembling layer by layer plastic metal and ceramic material that have already cut with a laser beam then uh, another method is a fuse deposition modeling and this a uh, fuse deposition modeling i have to use for the uh, create a brick shoe here we see the image of the Uh, FDM machine. Uh, this FDM machine is an additive manufacturing uh, process. It is a cheap and uh, faster in use. Here we see see the 
two types of material used for the creating prototype one is a build material and another one is a uh, support material uh, then from this nozzle this material is at a particular temperature uh, this material is melted and create a prototype model layer by layer uh, as per our data and uh, finally the part is uh, fi finally the prototype is made then uh, the support material also attached with that when the part is uh, collect from the machine then uh, using some another technique the this support material will be removed and our part is ready to use then some simulation or analysis uh, with a different material uh, generally in the break shoe 10 minutes the, is up please wrap it up yes yes uh, generally made up of a steel copper or iron uh, in this uh, yeah, it's a, the three material three uh, composite material i have to use for the simulation one is the abs material here we see the melting temperature density and its formula also and this image show the uh, simulation then another material is polystyrene material uh, this melting point is uh, between 240 degrees celsius and the impact of deformation is uh, see here then another material is aluminum alloy 6061 t6 uh, here is the chemical composition of uh, this material and density melting point is uh, shown in this slide then result and conclusion as per study the brake shoe is made up of steel copper as we know uh, when the brake is applied then the pressure comes on the surface of the brake shoe uh, due to the deformation uh, occur on the brake shoe in this paper study the abs polystyrene material and aluminum alloy to calculate a different uh, different deformation on that uh, from using the ansi software i have to use these references to make a paper presentation or making a paper um, thank you questions any questions Uh, Shubendra, it was a good presentation. Okay, Just one you. question. Uh, can you so, differentiate between rapid prototyping and 3D printing? Uh, I, rapid prototyping is... Uh, yeah. There is a... Is, uh, basically, there is a no difference, but uh, the 3D printing is a, a printer type uh, technique. Uh, we have to... <coughs> suppose a one... A, uh, uh, one part we given uh, there is a uh, break if a uh, consider a break shoe uh, but uh, the break shoes data is not uh, uh, mentioned in any uh, any uh, uh, our uh, data no. means sir uh, okay. this data is not provided um, uh, but we uh, we have to make that particular uh, part then we have to use this printing machine to collect the data that is uh, uh, not uh, given for us or <coughs> not provided then in the prototyping machine means rapid prototyping uh, the various techniques uh, we have to use for the making that uh, component to fulfill our uh, requirements. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And next, let's welcome our next speaker, Mr. Ran Randir Chavan, to present the paper about analysis of flow and heat transfer enhancement of turmeric cooking steam generator. Second call to Mr. Randir Chavan to pre oh. Hi. Yeah. Hello. 
All right, I can see your screen and yes, you are audible. Please proceed. You have 10 minutes. Yeah, thank you. Is it my, uh, my screen is visible to all? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank thank you. you. So, first of all, I would like to thank you all and the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present my work here in this international conference. Uh, this paper is on analysis of flow and heat transfer enhancement of turmeric cooking steam generator. Presented by myself, Randeer Chauhan and Dr. S.D. Party. Department of Mechanical Engineering, Kasega Education Societies, Rajaram Babu Institute of Technology, Sangha. So, first of all, I will discuss here the abstract for this research work. The, uh, the performance of existing mobile volume turmeric cooking steam generator is investigated. Uh, actually, the mobile volume turmeric cooking steam generator has been developed by one of the uh, manufacturer here in Maharashtra. Uh, located in Sangli district, that is Maharatna Steel Industries. And uh, they have uh, they are, uh, been manufactured this turmeric, mobile volume turmeric uh, cooking steam generator. The CFD analysis uh, uh, is done on that particular turmeric uh, steam generator, and results are validated with that, uh, with the field data. And the results are found in uh, good agreement with the field data. Uh, then uh, present work is uh, work aims at to increase the turbulence in fire tubes in order to enhance the rate of heat transfer. That is, uh, in this uh, present uh, model, we have employed such techniques so as to enhance the rate of heat transfer between the uh, fire domain and between the water. Uh, and we found uh, the good results uh, after employing some passive techniques. The efficiency has been increased by almost six percent. Uh, by employing that passive techniques. So this is the abstract of this work. Then this, this is the objective uh, for this uh, uh, project or this research work uh, to analyze the existing turbine cooking steam generator. Second objective is to develop numerical simulation of existing steam generator uh, in CFD. Then to enhance heat transfer rate of steam generator by employing some passive techniques such as I've used uh, some uh, one of the passive techniques is novel flow, flow divider type terminator and comparison of results with the existing data. So the introductory part for the, uh, we'll have the introduction of this uh, particular turmeric cooking steam generator here. Uh, this uh, turmeric cooking steam generator is being used in the remote areas of farms. Uh, why this turmeric curing steam generator or cooking steam generator is, is been developed? Because uh, India is the leading country in the uh, producing uh, the uh, raw turmeric. So uh, for the post harvesting, uh, in the post post harvesting, uh, raw turmeric has to cure to maintain the curcumin percentage from two percent to the six percent. So there is uh, a need to cure or need to cook the turmeric raw turmeric rhizomes so as to uh, so as to confirm the uh, curcumin percent into that raw turmeric. Then the input energy is supplied by the burning of wood or husk. The existing uh, steam uh, turmeric system, uh, curing steam generator has an efficiency about 10% only. I have investigated the uh, uh, existing steam generator and the efficiency uh, I, I found is only 10%. The scope is to, and there is scope to, uh, in to, to improve the efficiency by applying some passive techniques. So the 10% efficiency is very less. And uh, as this turmeric uh, curing steam generator is being used uh, in the remote areas of farms, so we can't use the active techniques of heat transfer, such as we can't employ the blowers and ID fans and uh, so on. So we have to stick with the passive techniques so as to increase the rate of uh, heat transfer in this turmeric curing steam generator. So we employed uh, one of the passive techniques of heat transfer. So on this slide, you can see the actual uh, developed uh, steam generator by Maharatna Steel Industries uh, that you can see here. How the process is, uh, uh, the, how this uh, uh, raw turmeric is being uh, uh, cooked. I can see here the downside of or the yellow part is the is the boiler shape. Inside that boiler shape, the fire tubes are placed uh, in vertical direction. Uh, from uh, at the bottom side, the furnace is present. From 
where the uh, wood or husk is feeded into into that uh, furnace then the uh, in and, and uh, uh, in the, in this uh, yellow shell uh, outside the fire tube the water uh, is present and the heat transfer is takes place uh, in that fire tube and the uh, that water domain or the water shell and the water is converted into the saturated steam and that that will comes uh, that will come out from the top of that uh, boiler shell and that uh, saturated water will go to the this barrels uh, containing the raw turmeric and that will cook that raw turmeric uh, as to enhance the uh, curcumin percentage so this is what the generally uh, the process which is carried out on the field and you can see on the uh, the figures on the right side the views of that uh, boiler shell or the turmeric not boiler but the steam generator from the top side and the bottom side uh, this uh, uh, steam generator has got uh, 12 fire tubes inside this uh, steam generator or the inside this pressure vessel and the, at bottom side you can see the there is place to burn the wood and the husk uh, that is the furnace uh, uh, area so this is the actual uh, model uh, for the uh, uh, steam generator so i have uh, did the anal heat analysis that is analytic uh, heat analysis and i i said that the efficiency of this current or the existing model uh, i found uh, uh, approximately 10% so the efficiency very low uh, so uh, we uh, thought of to employ some passive techniques to increase the effic uh, efficiency uh, or the heat transfer rate between the fire domain and the water water shell so in this uh, slide you can see uh, i have uh, developed a cad model for the existing uh, steam generator i have extracted the fluid domain as you can see on the left side of the figure uh, and i have made the model using katia and the same model uh, existing model with the same scale uh, developed in katia and meshed in the ansys uh, uh, fluent as you can see here uh, in this figure uh, and the boundary conditions uh, for this simulation i used uh, as uh, the fire inlet temperature uh, on field is 809 degrees celsius the water inlet velocity uh, is 0.0088 meter per second then fire inlet velocity uh, uh, fire inlet uh, that is the velocity inlet the condition i have taken as 0.91 meters per second these values are taken up from the field and uh, this uh, same value are given to the uh, cad simulations for the existing steam generator analysis then uh, i have employed one passive techniques as i said that i have employed novel flow divider type turbulator in the fire tubes to create uh, the turbulence inside the fire tube uh, this uh, the intention behind this insertion of this uh, uh, turbulator so as to increase uh, the or to uh, transfer the heat from the core of the tube to the boundary the boundary layer of the tube so as to increase the rate of heat transfer between the fire tube and the water uh, shell uh, so the you can see the geometry of the turbulator in this slide uh, the uh, the pitch uh, pitch to diameter ratio i have Uh, taken as 0.54, which is again in the reference. The one of the researchers uh, have uh, given this uh, uh, PD ratio, uh, the effect of novel flow divider type turbulator on the fluid flow and heat transfer. That the research is done by or carried out carried out by Sandeep Pinarode in the year 19, 2019. Then and that research paper is published in one of the H uh, index paper of uh, publication. then cbd analysis uh, is done on the uh, same uh, after insertion of uh, turbulator inside the fire uh, tubes so the so same boundary condition is given for the uh, after insertion of the turbulator the boundary conditions are same uh, for the existing model and after insertion of turbulators so in this slide you can see the cbd uh, meshing or the meshing in the ansys fluent so result and discussions uh, so first here uh, on, the, on the left side the graph you can see here the temperature that is the steam temperature at outlet is uh, uh, is uh, it comes out as 95 degree celsius so that is the uh, that 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 is a good, good agreement with the field data so and this first graph shows the uh, the simulation for the existing model with no modifications and the results are ma matched with the existing uh, field uh, model or the data and the uh, the figure on the, or the chart on the right side shows the uh, results or the shows the temperature profile for the uh, after insertion of turbulator inside the fire tube and here you can see 
the temperature of the steam at outlet has been increased from 95 degrees celsius to 101.5 degree uh, 0.53 degrees celsius so here is so here is a great uh, increase in temperature uh, seen at outlet of, uh, of this uh, steam generator after insertion of turbulent so here is the flue gas uh, temperature profile on the left side you can see the uh, uh, flue gas temperature profile uh, with no modification so you can see the the temperature distribution inside the fire tubes the 12 fire tubes and on the right side you can see the temperature distribution for the flue gases after insertion of the turbulator how this uh, this flue gases are uh, given the or the, how the temperature is distributed along the this fire tubes you can see the uh, difference on these two uh, sides 10 minutes is up please wrap, wrap it up the similarly water domain uh, the, here is the temperature profile for the water domain where the water is present which will convert into the steam and which will come out as a stat saturated film at the uh, top side or the from the top side so and on the left side you can see the water domain uh, temperature profile for the plain tube with no modification and on the right side you can see the uh, the water domain temperature profile after insertion of turbulator so you can see the temperature distribution inside the uh, uh, the profile uh, inside the water shell uh, with this slide I, I will conclude this work the analytical analysis is done on existing steam generator and found efficiency only 10% the modeling and machine of existing steam generator is done by using CATIA and ANSYS fluent respectively. The numerical results matched with the field data for plain tube, uh, and then uh, the, uh, for example, EG, uh, for example, the steam temperature on field is uh, 100 degrees Celsius, that is the saturated steam temperature, and I uh, numerically found the temperature of steam at outlet has 95 degrees Celsius. With the use of passive technique uh, of heat transfer, that is after insertion of turbulator. It is observed that the steam temperature has been increased uh, by almost 6.43 percentage, that is from 95 degrees Celsius to the 101.53 degrees Celsius. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Randir. Yes. Sir. The, uh, very good presentation. And it is very good to see that the technology is. Uh, utilized for agriculture purpose and uh, how to optimize and e efficient way of cultivating our agricultural products. Yes, sir. thank you. Sir. Uh, yeah, just one question is whatever is the source of energy we are using in this particular case for heating purpose. So have you thought of any alternatives uh, for uh, the heating energy, whatever we are going to use? Yes, sir. Uh, currently, I am working on the uh, alternative energy source. That is, we are introducing a LPG, uh, that is uh, liquid pe liquefied petroleum gas, to yes. heat up that water. We are, we are currently working on that. We are designing a burner uh, so as to heat up that water inside the, that uh, shell. Okay. Because ga gas fired furnaces, that can be one good alternative yes, for sir. this particular, which will be making it more efficient. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. And now let's call on our next presenter. Let us welcome Prathamish Gond to present the paper Studies on Fish Supply. Oh, studies on Fish Supply Chain Management in Raigad District. A case study. A case study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hi. Let me hold on. All right, go ahead and share your screen, please. Hello, good morning, all. Uh, I'm, my name is Pratamesh Gunda. Today, I am going to present my paper titled Studies on Fish Supply Chain Management in Raigad District, a case study. My research is guided by Dr. Neeraj Jagrawal. First of all, what is fish supply chain management? Fish supply chain management is the effective management of all the activities from fish catch to the end consumer. 
uh, basically it is the management of all the activities involved in uh, involved in um, you can see that india rank land fish production india produces around main single most important problem facing the india uh, indian fish uh, fishery industry is of highly inefficient supply chain and uh, greater fish wastage at uh, retailer and consumer level as we all know the refrigeration plays an important role in uh, Uh, supply chain management of uh, uh, any perishable food so the succession of refrigeration steps along the supply chain and that are applied to keep fish in the desired temperature uh, is referred to as cold chain and uh, uh, in india we have a uh, lack of cold chain infrastructure so uh, due to the lack of cold chain infrastructure and inadequate of uh, inadequacy of the Uh, fish product processing industry about 25 to 30 percent of the all fish produced in India is wasted. Here is the uh, ba uh, basic uh, structure of fish supply chain management. Uh, basically, uh, it is started from a fisherman. Fisherman is the person who catches the fish. Then uh, followed by auctioneer. Uh, uh, ba uh, auctioneer uh, facilitates the trade of fish by conducting open auction. Uh, then uh wholesaler plays an important role between the auctioneer or fisherman and uh, a retailer wholesaler facilitates the large quantity uh, of fish movement uh, uh, fish movement then retailer uh, uh, is the uh, mediator between the consumer and wholesaler uh, who handles uh, similarly uh, 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 who handles uh, small quantity of fish and uh, consumer is the end consumer who uh, is the uh, group of people who consumes the uh, variety of fish here is the uh, glimpse of literature review these are uh, these authors worked on a similar kind of study and their major finding uh, finding was a lack of cold chain management and lack of infrastructure facilities uh, uh, affects that uh, fish wastage uh, affects food uh, food wastage in uh, uh, supply chain we have selected raigad district for study uh, the reason behind uh, that is i am from the same district and uh, i belong to the similar society as a fisherman so it is being wasted so it was the need of the our to study this here is the uh, 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 Example of uh, 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 survey schedule I have prepared and used for my survey. Uh, I have I have prepared uh, the survey in uh, 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 segments like daily fish production and wastage, amount of fish wastage, etc. here is the extent of survey uh, i have uh, done in uh, for this study uh, 25 fish landing centers uh, and uh, around 20 37 visits i have uh, uh, 20 uh, 37 visits for this uh, 25 fish landing centers it is the current supply chain structure uh, which is uh, 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 in the district the major we can see that uh, the major uh, supply chain pattern is from a fisherman to auctioneer to auctioneer to wholesaler then retailer and uh, consumer uh, some of uh, fisher fish to uh, factory agents and then factory agents to uh, here is the base uh, supply chain currently we can see here the ends of equal storage also some of uh, some or centers is used for 
long distance I think there is some network issue. Yeah, I breaking. think we lost him. Let, let's give him some time and let's go ahead and call on our next presenter instead. Um, Mrs. Sigi Lewis, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. All yes, right, great. So let us welcome okay. Mrs. Sigi Lewis to present analyzing the vibration effect of cutting tool on surface roughness of turning workpiece in the lath machine. Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead and share your screen, please. Yes, ma'am. Just hold on. Extremely sorry. Uh, hello? Yes. Um, you're back? Please make sure to... Yes, I'm back. All right. Please make sure that your internet connection is um, stable. Mrs. Luis, can you stop sharing your screen? Let's have him since he's back. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Share your screen again. And you have two minutes left. Sir? Yes. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen, okay. please. Can you stop sharing? Yes. Yes. And let me remind you again, you have two minutes left. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. Mora uh, Karanza uh, use uh, a la uh, large quantity of fish for long distance markets whereas murut zone which has not uh, which have not uh, uh, any uh, means uh, market uh, facilities available so uh, it uses very uh, less quantity of fish to for long distance markets we can see the statistics about fish production and daily uh, daily fish production and daily wastage we can see uh, the uh, again mora karanza have uh, highest daily fish production and uh, murut zone have uh, relatively lower uh, fish production and uh, the highest fish wastage uh, at uh, uh, fisherman stage is uh, at alibag zone daily fish balance is the uh, remaining quantity after uh, <clears throat> Uh, fish uh, consumption or distribution. So uh, at Jivna zone near Srivardhan, uh, there is a uh, there is a relatively highest uh, fish quantity remaining after the consumption or distribution, which is about 2.5 metric ton. Then uh, 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 here are the uh, uh, fish wastage regions, uh, which are uh, uh, analyzed by uh, the responses given by the supply chain intermediaries, which are uh, shortage of cold storage facilities, shortage of refrigerated vehicles, shortage of ice, vehicle failure and uh, storage equipment damage, no market, less demand, and uh, then lack of uh, sun exposure. And uh, lack of sun exposure is again for uh, dry fish. Like they uh, have to, uh, means uh, dry fish is uh, relatively depend upon the sun exposure or that. So it is for that. And then quality issue and fish cut. Here are the storage related survey statistics. Uh, we can see that uh, the, at fisherman and, or retailer stage, they uh, not at all store the fish. Only 7% uh, of wholesalers store the fish for two to three days and uh, which is only in ice. So, and uh, there is uh, cold storage are uh, not at all available in Raigad district. Uh, only ice is used for, for uh, fish storage uh, 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 people uh, or intermediaries in uh, Raiga district uh, fish supply chain management are not at all satisfactory uh, uh, satis uh, satisfied by uh, the availability of ice here is the transportation <clears throat> method used for fish uh, the major uh, transportation uh, transportation used for fish uh, is uh, by conven conventional vehicles. Only 6 out of 25 centers have refrigerated and insulated vehicles uh, that include Alibag, Jivna, Sakarakshi, that are main cities of uh, uh, like uh, Raigad district. But that refrigerated and insulated vehicles are uh, of uh, factory owned. So that are not also uh, of means uh, for fishermen. 
the only refrigeration which is provided to transport fish by conventional vehicles is by means of ice <laughs> here is the availability of infrastructural facilities uh, we can see the mean and standard deviation used for knowing the present status uh, it is generally presented as a mean plus or minus standard deviation as the mean score improves the infrastructural availability would be good we can see ice plant cold storage modern uh, wholesaler markets and insulated vehicles uh, etc are having a very low or no uh, uh, are very low or not at all present uh, in raigad district uh, so uh, that are uh, not satisfactorily available here is the proposed supply chain model with depicting mode of transportation we have proposed the uh, this supply chain model for current supply chain model we have seen that uh, previous model we can uh, add the uh, the cold storage means uh, in uh, uh, we can uh, add a cold storage in nearby cities like uh, if two or three uh, centers we can add one cold storage and they can have that cold storage for storing their fish and we can have the uh, benefit of uh, price vary uh, price fluctuation and also uh, they can use that for uh, long distance markets and uh, uh, we can use insulated vehicles for relatively short uh, distance markets and uh, can use refrigerated vehicles for relatively long distance markets uh, uh, then uh, means law Uh, in long distance markets we uh, have they uh, generally provide fish to punjab haryana karnataka kerala and uh, in uh, relate in nearby countries also please wrap it up here are the conclusions of my study yes here are the conclusion of my study uh, fish cage is mostly distributed to retailers and then local consumer uh, consumer markets uh, total of 14% uh, of fish is wasted in the entire supply chain management currently there is a 14% uh, uh, wastage in uh, uh, 14% daily leaf fish wastage uh, in the supply chain shortage of ice is uh, for uh, for storing is the main uh, cause of fish wastage because they only use ice for storing so and uh, that is not also uh, available for the storing the uh, that's why shortage of ice is the only reason the survey tells about 55% of total fish uh, quantity is distributed to long distance markets including nearby cities states and countries the uh, fish market infrastructure is poor and uh, Uh, most of the uh, fish uh, fishing centers it is proposed that district it is suggested to use insulated vehicles for relatively short distance market and re refrigerated vehicles for relatively long distance markets here are the, the uh, here are the uh, references i have used for this study thank you any questions all right do you have any questions uh, one one question is in this uh, covid 19 pandemic what is the effect uh, on the supply chain related to this fish market have you have you studied about uh, in this uh, no actually this study was uh, uh, carried out the, uh, before covid 19 okay so what are parameters but i will i will work on that yeah because what are parameters you have considered these are all in normal conditions but now the last one and a half yes. years the entire uh, supply chains in different sectors they have got uh, severely affected so try to add this component yes, yes, also right. into your research so that your research will be uh, will be having that component of the effect of pandemic on supply chain in the fish market area okay. yes uh, definitely i will work on that yeah. thank you yes thank you Thank you so much and thank you so much for that presentation and now let's proceed with our next presenter. Um hi again Mrs. Sigi Lewis. Thank you so much for your patience. Are you ready? All right. Yes, All right I'm to ready. present analy analyzing the vibration effect of cutting tool on surface roughness of turning workpiece in lab machine. All right. I uh, yes, I can hear you. You yes, can go ahead and uh, share your. I just screen. open my PPT. Uh, can you, you see the screen, ma'am? 
Yes, have it on presentation mode. Please. Yes, ma'am. I'm doing slideshow. Just hold on. Yeah. There. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, it is. Please proceed. Okay. Um. Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Yes. Ma'am. Research Did you see? article title. That's supposed to be your title. Oh, yeah. yeah that should be your title. <laughs> okay. I'll just read it out. I forgot that. Okay. My research. Ah, okay. Okay. Can you go is... back to that page, please? I'll just need okay. to take a photo. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Sorry. Go ahead and proceed, please. Yeah. My okay. research title is analyzing the vibration effect of cutting tool on surface roughness of turning workpiece in lathe machine. Myself. My name is Siji Lewis, uh, and I'm guided by Professor Nyeti Rao. Okay. Um, uh, I'm here with the topic of uh, analyzing the uh, cutting tool, vibration of the cutting tool, prevention of the tool damage, the tool that we are using on the lathe machine. Okay, we are using uh, here this uh, Taguchi method. Uh, now in this method, we, uh, when we optimize uh, the speed, feed and depth of cut uh, with these uh, three parameters, we are optimized and we can make uh, uh, the surface roughness little less. Um, so first what we have done is we are using the mini tab software uh, where we put the maximum and minimum parameters and then we get the nine different um, uh, different parameters we get it automatically and then uh, we have drawn the tool in the uh, CATIA uh, geometry and then uh, we have converted uh, this into the uh, CAD file uh, that is the dot .stp file. Uh, so uh, we will do nine sample tests on turning lathe machine and then we get the optimized solution. Okay, how much uh, uh, the speed and feed and uh, uh, depth of cut should be there. And uh, we have taken, uh, we have done uh, FEA analysis of the tool and uh, uh, how much vibration is coming is measured by using this uh, analysis. Okay, so here uh, is our uh, objective uh, to understand the effect of cutting tool wear on surface roughness of workpiece and uh, modeling of exist cutting tool in CATIA V5 software. Uh, we have also done model and uh, harmonic analysis uh, on ANSYS and uh, to manufacturing of uh, turning workpiece samples on both normal and wear tool of the lathe machine. We have measured the vibration of cutting tool during the turning process. They are recorded using the accelerometer of FFT analyzer. Uh, then we have measured the surface roughness of the workpiece samples. Uh, experimental uh, testing is done and we have concluded with the result. Uh, so here we have the uh, the material tool that we have taken. Tool ka jo mat tools material is there. We have taken as HSS tool, and uh, here we have the um, Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio zero point two eight. Um, the uh, uh, next step that we uh, go on to in the analysis is the meshing part. Um, after putting the material properties, uh, we have to do the meshing. So if our meshing is very fine, uh, th then that much uh, good will be our result. So after meshing, uh, here we'll get the number of nodes and uh, number of elements. Okay. Uh, the next step uh, here, uh, we go on to the boundary condition. So what is the boundary condition? So for that purpose, we have to uh, keep a fixed point. We have put a fixed point on the geometry. And uh, then when we uh, put the uh, solve button, we will get uh, the different, uh, we have to select the different mode shape. So here uh, we have uh, five different modes. Yeah, four is here, fifth one. So here we have the five different modes, okay, or uh, different materials. What is the different static condition or, or vibration? When vibration happens, what is the uh, different uh, static condition? So first mode uh, that we got is uh, uh, 793 is the hertz, 793 hertz. So depending upon the mode shape, the frequency is responsible. Uh, res frequency response of the tool starts from 793.97. After this, uh, uh, doing the mode shape, we entered into the harmonic analysis. Okay, so then we perform harmonic analysis to calculate the acceleration. Uh, uh, after giving the vibration from the harmonic analysis, uh, we will know how much uh, amplitude it is produced in the tool. So here uh, we have found out the uh, maximum yeah. Here we have found out that the through this graph, you'll come to know that we have found out the maximum acceleration that is 77.562. Okay, so it is around 77 meters per second squared. So that much uh, uh, acceleration we are getting. 
uh, after that uh, we have done uh, the same with uh, we have uh, finished up with the uh, analysis and then we have started with the experimental testing where we have done it on fft analysis okay um, here we have done the dry uh, run test yeah dry testing here we have done the dry run testing uh, when we uh, make uh, we have done this on the uh, normal machine uh, where we'll come to know how much frequency response we get okay um, okay here is both the um, uh, the fea analysis uh, of five samples we have taken similarly experimental testing five samples we have taken uh, we have come to know that the uh, 793 is the uh, first mode uh, mode shape and here the experimental uh, uh, validation same is 761 okay so here is the validation between the fea and the experimental testing here we conclude that uh, when we are using uh, the required speed, speed and uh, speed, feed and depth of cut, that is speed when we are taking around 424 RPM and speed is around 0 0.10 and depth of cut is 2.0. Uh, from this FEA model analysis, we can conclude that the natural frequency of the lathe cutting tool at mode shape is maximum at uh, 7,344 hertz. And uh, the harmonic analysis, what we have done through that, we can conclude that the maximum uh, acceleration we have observed is around uh, 77, uh, uh, 77 meters per second square. So uh, through this, we can conclude if it exceeds the 77, uh, we will get a, a bad uh, surface roughness. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sir, yeah. any doubt? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Questions? So, Just is it a down. part of any uh, postgraduate or doctoral uh, research work? Sir, can you uh, repeat, sir? I cannot hear you. Is it a is part it... of some project under uh, yes, sir. postgraduate studies or research work? Yes, sir. Uh, I am doing my master's, so it is a part of my research. Okay. Which university? Mumbai University. But... Uh, I think there are so many uh, research papers you will find uh, which have uh, done the research work related to pool condition monitoring yes. and the various parameters related to this uh, application of Minitab, Taguchi, uh, yes. using various methodologies. So anything uh, different you are doing than whatever research work is already there? So this is my first paper. One more paper I have to put, I have to do more research on it. And the second paper also I have to publish. So I am working on it. Okay, so this is just the beginning of uh, your... This is my first paper chart. which I have put. Uh, second paper, again I'll do more research and I will yes. publish it. So try, try to bring some novelty uh, so that yes. your paper and research work will have some uh, different results, different outcomes and some different parameters than whatever are in the existing domain. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. You were not audible. Sir, me? No, no, no. no I'm sorry. Oh, thank sorry. you. My apologies. Okay. All right. Thank you so much again for that presentation. And now let's move on to our next presenter. Let us welcome Tijal Dinka Raut to present the paper about productivity improvement by proper utilization of sources. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I can see your screen now, but I cannot yeah. hear. Hello. Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, there you go. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead and proceed, uh, please. Have afternoon. it on presentation mode, by the way. Yeah. So, hello, everyone. Myself, Tejal Rao. I'm a student of Masters of Engineering from Viva College. So basically, my topic is to that uh, productivity implement by using some proper utilization of sources. Okay. Uh, and my guide is uh, Professor Niyati Rav, ma'am. So basically in case of uh, industry, in case of small scale or in case of uh, larger scale industry, basically they are look forward the productivity with less time, with less amount of, you can say loss or some less, uh, 
minimum amount of we can say rework you have to go for a number of you have to follow a number of techniques just like in case of lean manufacturing is there you can say kanban is there six sigma is there total management quality management is there that is you can say tqm is there tp means there otherwise you go for some time study in order to find out the number of uh, resources or your number of the reasons which are behind the you can say extra time in order to analyze that complete process you have to get the proper result basically so here uh, this is not actually uh, uh, you can see the task for it so you have to go for a number of uh, productivity development in order to reduce the cost and in order to uh, reduce the you can say difficulties in case of any kind of production process basically so there is one kind of need for a quick and inexpensive solution for a problem or you can say to develop a product so this is the basic uh, abstract related to my topic now in case of problem statement uh, in this particular in this uh, particular study we are going to address the industrial situation in which uh, where the organization group can make number of decision about their expansion okay we are going to uh, think about the number of you can say parameters which can be reduced in order to increase the productivity in order to get the proper product with proper you can say results uh, customer satisfaction like that so here our goal is to go the organization with some efficient productivity less amount of cost and you can say uh, minimum amount of the you can say rework process or you can say some losses which are already there in case of the industries so here i have done some time study related to uh, a number of you can say operations so basically i have some data related to that so uh, here there are some kind of elements which are uh, group here so these are number of operation you can say so as for the operations we have number of machines in our sequence matter there are some number of you can say parameters which we are going to uh, explain in a tabular form so here i'm going to write down some kind of setup times related to you can say sharing operations there are some kind of processing times there are some kind of different kind of operation just like bending or cutting sharing stamping or you can say placing is there few hole is there like that so these are the you can say a uh, number of operation which have which uh, we have included in our data and the respected you can say setup time and the process time for that particular process in order to complete the task so here the time taken to complete all this activities was recorded by using the standard timing learning processes and the recording method was done by some snapback method so here it is considered as 90% now here this is the uh, you can say tabular form or the data i have collected so here these are the number of elements and the description you can see sequence now this is what the machine setup time that is you can say operation time now it is in seconds and this is what the operating time so here is the setup time for that particular machine or a particular operation and the respected operation time for that so i have uh, taken a 15 number of it's a samples for it they can the mean of that particular reading then after the standard deviation so these are the parameters which you have uh, calculated just like mean or standard deviation or the degree of freedom for that particular you can say structure uh, then after the accuracy and some formula which is taken that is t alpha by 2 at that particular component level and the number of cycles which are required for that particular machine and the process is written over here now this is uh, the basic you can say sequence table for the number of app, uh, operation with respect to the uh, machines you can say so here uh, basically i have listed a number of sequences of the machine so here i am going for first sharing and then after it is like a uh, drawing by using some press okay accordingly uh, we have a uh, sequence is number of sorry number of uh, operations in a sequence manner up to 10 numbers and accordingly we are going to use some machines in a proper way for a particular process or you can say operation now this is the time data time study data which has been recorded for a particular element while uh, sharing operation by using the sharing machine so here are around 87 numbers of uh, uh, you can say data or you can say readings so this is for the strokes and the you can say operation time and the these are the number of uh, you can say uh, parameters for a particular cycle for cycle up to 87 number of cycle accordingly we have collected the data 
normal time operation time and the stroke now this is uh, the basic alerts which are actually included in case of any kind of uh, you can say work or a particular task so these are categorized as per the parameter of allowances so in case of personal it has been taken around up to 4.5% then after in case of basic fatigue uh, it is around taken about uh, 4% in case of variable allowances there are uh, four numbers of parameters which are basically uh, abnormal position allowance use of the force noise level and monotomy so these are basically taken as 2.5 1.0 1.5 and 1.0 uh, sorry 1.5 respectively so these are uh, you can see the allowance which are used to include in case of any kind of task because we uh, face some kind of fatigue we have some kind of personal uh, you can say work or in case of some kind of uh, depending on the condition of that particular area just like in case of noise level or you can say the you can say in case of condition of uh, um, uh, MB, uh, ambitious, uh, sorry, ambitious uh, of that particular area, just like uh, it is uh, basically hot in that particular uh, atmosphere, or it is very cold like that. So we have uh, taken some values for the allowances for our time study. These are given. So allowance is around total is sixteen percent taken. Now in case of calculations, the formula is taken. That is for uh, N three, the number of cycle equals to what T alpha by two. Into S divided by K into mu raised to to what you can see square. So this uh, basically T alpha by two the T values uh, for alpha equals to zero point five. Now this alpha is basically the probability of uh, detecting a slightly or different when the uh, the particular uh, treatment are equally effective. It can it may have some kind of risk of false positive findings like that. So K is the accuracy or the proportion of interval. So it is around plus minus zero uh, five point zero uh, percent for the actual, and mu is the sample mean. So here, uh, with this formula, we have taken some fifteen number of samples, and we have calculated some uh, values. So in case of this, a sample calculation of number of readings required, in you can see spread of uh, values can be found out in the table, which is in the next slide. So after calculating this, we got some uh, you can say uh, parameters, just like here. Uh, the maximum number was found around is 1.7 countering setting time, and here uh, the required test number was around selected as 150. So, uh, in case of this standard calculation method is used uh, with the allowances that is uh, uh, discussed in our previous table. So, these are the 15 numbers of you can see samples. Accordingly, you have taken the timing. So, you have find out the mean of that particular uh, you can see operation time or that for that particular machine. For 15 numbers of uh, cycles or the operations, and then after the standard deviation is there, degree of freedom which uh, which is taken for the particular structure of machine and the mobility, uh, and then after the accuracy and this particular uh, formula we have taken already. So these are the number of cycles which are required for this particular uh, you can say uh, uh, operation and the structure. Now here. Uh, Around uh, 4.5 percent of a personal grant is required for the operation and the basic fatigue grant of around 4 percent. So these are already included in case of our allowances, etc. So uh, the results after this formula, that is standard time equals to normal time into one plus allowances. So here all the consideration, uh, it was found that it is to be held at 1.15 minutes. And then after after using the formula. The input required to calculate the error is the total recorded time and the unaccounted time. So here the values are around two zero four point two nine and three point zero seven nine minutes as per using this formula for the previous table. And the error was found around to be one. So it was found out to be one point four seven within the acceptable manner. So it is around zero to two point three percent and it is one point four seven. So this is the time check table. So elapsed time in minutes. So these are the times uh, parameters in minutes for elapsed time for total checking time, effective time, ineffective time, a uh, total recorded time, unaccounted time, and the uh, error uh, time. You can see this also includes the number of you can say uh, allowances which are given in case of the operation and the uh, particular operator person. Now the conclusion is that uh, we can say that that it. Uh, The problem statement was presented, and it had to follow the 
uh, you can say statements. The result released by this project is what we can go for productivity is around uh, 33 percent or more than that. So we're going to continue this particular uh, observations and the studies related to the operation and the time required for that. The product growth has lower cost associated with it, and the cost given for each component is not significant. So uh, here I conclude my presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you have uh, done a good work. Only, Hello. Um, yeah. Hi, yes, my, my suggestion is if you go huh? to your title, it seems to be very generic productivity improvements okay. by proper utilization of resources. So, yes, sir. Uh, putting the words like proper utilization of resources becomes very generic in nature. So, okay. So, whenever you are uh, submitting any paper, it will be better if you put which uh, sources you are going to utilize for productivity okay. improvement. So better to go for uh, mentioning those sources instead of uh, having this generalized statement like proper utilization of resources. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank All right, you, sir. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for that presentation. All right, then let's go ahead and proceed to our next presenter. Akshay Patil to present frequency shift analysis of shape memory alloy reinforced composite plate. Yes, Hi, okay. yes, I can hear you. Go ahead and share your screen, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, all of you. Is my screen vis visible? Uh, good Almost afternoon. not yet. Not not yet visible. One minute, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. No. Not yet. Can you stop sharing? Oh, yeah. When you share your screen, please make sure to choose the screen that you want to share, especially yes. the presentation. Now? No. Nope. No, we are not able to see the screen. One minute, sir. Now, sir? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Have it on afternoon. presentation mode, please. Go to presentation mode. Okay, okay. And proceed. You have 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, myself, Akshay Dilip Patil. Uh, it gives me warm pleasure to present my conference paper in this uh, international conference uh, on innovation challenge and uh, advance in engineering technology. Uh, so the title of my thesis is Frequency Shift Analysis of SME Reinforced Composite Plate Bi Biography. Uh, I am currently pursuing my MTech in Mechanical Design from uh, Rajarambapu Institute of Technology, Islampur, under the Shivaji University. And uh, currently I am working on uh, my project area that is uh, Mechanical Vibration. App stack. Uh, nowadays, uh, SMEs are widely used in various engineering applications uh, and uh, have ability to change its modulus with change in temperature. And this temperature uh, dependent <coughs> properties, uh, uh, due to this uh, temperature dependent property, consequently, the stiffness will be changes. So there is a result in uh, shift in natural frequency from uh, its excitation frequency. Uh, in this research, natural frequency shift of uh, SMA wire uh, with the help of uh, FFT and also FA analysis for the various models that I have, I have considered for my uh, project that for initial study are analyzed. Mm. Next. This is the my uh, experimental uh, setup. 
uh, we know that in a structural application natural frequency will co coincides with the uh, excitation frequency uh, resonance will created and system will be subjected to uncontrolled uh, vibration so it is therefore necessary to shift uh, that natural frequency from uh, its excitation frequency so that uh, we can avoid the resonance uh, <clears throat> one of the best way is shift in natural frequencies by frequency of uh, excitation of frequency uh, in this experiment uh, the setup shows a spring mass uh, system as shown in figure which I, in this uh, spring mass is uh, created spring mass system is created by simply attaching mass to the sma wire and uh, readings are taken by uh, room at room temperature by fft uh, first uh, for uh, different types of uh, wire diameter and then at uh, austin at temperature that is a same 37 degrees celsius the uh, results are obtained these are the fft graphs that i have been obtained for uh, uh, 7 to 0.75 mm diameter wire of uh, sme uh, in this we can uh, see at uh, martin side phase the frequency of ten is uh, 28.75 hertz and at austin side phase uh, there is shift in natural frequency that is uh, uh, frequency of ten is uh, 32.50 hertz so here is the table uh, for the frequency shift for uh, different types of wire diameter that i have used up to 1 uh, mm uh, for uh, we can see here 9 to almost 15 percent of the natural frequency shift is obtained uh, in the models. Uh, this is the Young's modulus calculation uh, obtained from the uh, which is calculated from obtained frequency by FFT. Uh, and then uh, uh, analytical calculation is done to find Young's modulus calculation. Also, we can see here for Young's modulus. Uh, frequency shift is uh, obtained in within 5 to 30 uh, percent. This is the, my uh, initial uh, co composite uh, that is uh, five wires uh, between two aluminum plates and uh, with elastomeric core. Here, elastomeric core is not shown because it has a uh, because it has a, no any effect on frequency shift. These are the results that I have obtained by finite in limit analysis by ANSYS workbench. Uh, we can see at uh, multi site mode for uh, five wire uh, obtained frequency and for astenite mode uh, obtained frequency shifts. This is the frequency shift uh, results obtained by FPA model. For uh, I have considered two wire to 10 wires uh, in the composite to see the effect of increasing the number of wires uh, on uh, uh, frequency shift in natural frequency. Conclusion, uh, we can <coughs> see uh, uh, SMS can uh, produce uh, shift in use modulus and hence frequency shift in natural frequencies of the same composite by shifting phase from uh, composite of, uh, by shifting phase from Martin side to standard phase. <coughs> According to simulation, the position of uh, SMI wire has uh, an uh, effect on composite place uh, natural frequency. As we increase the number of, uh, uh, as we increase the diameter and also we increase the uh, number of wires, the frequency shift will be, uh, frequency shift obtained will be increased. <clears throat> so, experimental results of uh, uh, spring mass system also shows that uh, there is a increase uh, if there is increase in wire diameter it will give more frequency shift thank you any questions questions <clears throat> hello yeah. Thank you so much for that presentation. Any questions? <clears throat> yeah, it was a good presentation. And no questions from my side. Uh, from audience, if there are any questions, you are welcome to ask. Yeah, them. anyone would like to ask a question or would like to provide a feedback?
yeah because this is the last session uh, last presentation in this session so we'll give chance to audience if they are yep. having any questions before we go on lunch <laughs> all right thank i you. think that thank you, thank you. <laughs> everyone is waiting for this one let's go ahead and go for lunch and yes i will give you that 10 minutes more so let's go back by what 2 p.m exactly 2 p.m india time <clears throat> yeah jojo so yep can can we have all uh, participants to have their video switched on yes sir and guys did you hear that please have all please, your please stop the presentation oh yes, yes, hold on all right all right guys see you guys enjoy lunch i will before we proceed later i will be asking everyone to please um turn on your cameras later uh, after lunch i will give you time to you know have yourself ready and i will take your beautiful faces later all right see you guys okay. have a great thank lunch you. yeah thank, thank you man. thank you very much
guys. We'll start in a few. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get back. Please have, please tell your colleagues and other presenters to get back to the conference. Although, uh, also participants of technical session 2A should join breakout room one. Again, please refer to the breakout rooms just right below on the lower right um part of your zoom meeting app you will see there more then click click on breakout rooms then click on break breakout room one for the participants of technical session two please remain present here on the main room i will be your moderator and for the technical session 2A, Divine will be your moderator. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, 
where which room I should join? Ah, uh, you will be with me, sir. You will be the session chair for this room. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. I'm actually waiting for our presenters. We only have six people here. Um, is Amit Razdan ready? All right, we need to start now, actually. I would like to yeah, introduce our session chair for technical session two. Proof head of department, head of the Department of Computer and Science Engineering, Vishwanikitan Institute of Management, Entrepreneurship and Engineering Technology. Welcome, sir, Professor Abhijit Patil. Yeah, thank you very much, ma'am. And I welcome all the participants of this technical session too. One moment, let me go and check if other participants are in the other room. Um, Amit Rajdan. Ansari. All right, we can we we will we need to proceed now. Um, hmm. So my first presenter should be Amit Razdan. Are you are you ready to present the secure data transmission through network using tiny encryption algorithm and stenography? Steganography. No, not available. How about Shamsul Haki Ansari? The paper about e-applications for IoT technologies and security solutions under smart city framework. Not here. Who is ready to present? Yes, that will be better now. Sorry? That will be better. Whoever will be ready, we can... Uh, yeah. It. Who is ready to present? Then you can go ahead. Again, who would like to present first? One moment, sir. People just came in who would like to present first. All right, I will give two more minutes. Whoever is in this group, please. Share the information to your colleagues that we are already starting. I'll give you one more, one to two more minutes.
हेलो सुधाकर सर सुधाकर सर मैं ऑडिट हेलो इस सुधाकर सर प्रेजेंट है आई एम सॉरी इस सुधाकर सर प्रेजेंट है नो हेलो सर हेलो सर जस्ट मिनट सर आई हैव इनफॉर्म्ड द पार्टिसिपेंट्स दे आर ऑन द वे दे विल जॉइन नाउ सर दे आर ऑन द वे सर फर्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट इज ऑन द वे सर ही विल जॉइन इन फ्यू मिनट्स यू हैव सम पावर कट इश्यूज ही इज सम फेसिंग द इश्यूज टेक्निकल इश्यूज ही विल जॉइन शॉर्टली सर वी कैन वेट फॉर फ्यू मोर मिनट्स ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू Mr chair you can you you still have a few more minutes to get a coffee or get something to drink we are still waiting for the participants to come in in a few minutes yeah no problem madam thank you thank you sir meanwhile the listeners they can join room 1 presentations are going on there yes sir no issues we will wait
Hello, everyone. Again, um, for technical session one, which is happening here in the main session, in the main room, I would um, take this opportunity opportunity to ask for an apology because um, we are our, our our presenters are encountering issues with the network and with um, their internet connection. So we are still trying to reach them out. For the meantime, you can join the breakout room and listen to our technical session 2A, which is currently going on at room one. Again, I really do apologize for the inconvenience and we'll still have a few minutes to Wait for them to come on. Thank you.
Uh, Ma'am, I think uh, one presenter is there and you should start with whoever present. That's great news. Who would like to present for technical session one? Excuse me, ma'am. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hello. Yes, yeah, hi. What's the name? Regarding okay. like we were given a mail that our session is technical 2A. So I don't know which room to join as we aren't informed which one to join. Oh, please join. Well, how many rooms do we have? Oh. Two rooms we have. Yeah. Only join room one. Uh, room two is closed. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay. Anyone would like to present for? Technical session two. Amitra's done, not yet. Shamsul Haki Ansari, not yet. Richa Suryavanshi. Madhura, Varsha Takur, okay.
ma'am you are not audible you are not audible please unmute <laughs> hi <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank it's, you so much. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening to our breakout room one with the electrical engineering department. And now I would like to thank you all who joined us today on our first day of conference of um, ICAET 2021. And tomorrow our conferences continue. So with keynote speeches followed by, their, of course, our technical sessions and followed by our valedictory session in which we will be announcing the best paper and the best paper presentation awards. And also the valedictory vote of thanks session will go on certificate and proceedings and and etc. So we would like to request you all to join the valedictory session too, if uh, even if all the presentation is uh, done already. And uh, guys, I would like to remind everyone to please be ready of all your presentations tomorrow and have your colleagues uh, be ready as per agenda. All right. Thank you all for today and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye.